Welcome back to the Criterion Cult. I am one of your hosts, Jordan Garcia. We also got Armando Arvizu, Diego Diaz, and Ignacio Viel. Oh yeah, baby, we're back. And today, well, actually, before we get into the movies, let me explain what the Criterion Cult podcast is all about. We come on here, we talk about a film that's in the Criterion Collection, and we discuss that film, but we also try each, so every episode, one of us brings a film that we believe should be in the collection. The other three argue whether it should go in and out. The Criterion Collection, if you haven't heard about it, you should look it up. You should also get the Criterion Channel. Um, but basically, the Criterion Collection is just a company that releases all kinds of different films from all over the world, all different times. All different eras of filmmaking, uh, ones that they deem are important and ones that need, uh, you know, restorations. They add a bunch of great uh, special features, great packaging. You should check them out. We're not sponsored by them, but we hope to be uh, very soon. Uh, please day. give us a call. Um, yeah, so, but today, Mondo picked the films, so he's going let to you, let you know a little about what we're talking about today. Yeah, so I, I, the first film I picked was uh, Crumb. That one's on the Criterion channel. And that one is directed by Terry Zigwoff or whatever you might know. He directed a uh, Ghost World and uh, Art School Confidential and Bad Santa. That's he right. Bad, Bad Santa, Santa was something new. I didn't know he he directed yeah, Bad Santa. He did that. The first one, not the second. Yeah, that's my. Did he write yeah. it? There's a second one. Uh, yeah, there's... yeah, there's one. Uh, I don't know. He didn't write it, right? I don't think so. I want to say no. <clears throat> but yeah, so uh, okay, so yeah, Terry Zig- Zigoff, uh directed Crumb. It's a documentary about the underground cartoonist Robert Crumb. He might know him from, uh, he did Fritz the Cat. He did a album cover for uh, Janis Joplin. Uh, what else did he do? The Keep on Truckin' logo thing <laughs> he's famous for. That's right. Um, mm-hmm. Mr. Natural. Mr. Yeah, Mr. Natural. And one of the recent, well not too recent, but he illustrated the book of Genesis, how it's written. Oh, that's oh, right. Really? Yeah. Really? Oh, wow. So he also did that, that, um, that uh, I had the thing with Charles Bukowski. He, like, yeah. uh, illustrated one of his stories. Oh. Yeah, he does that. And then yeah. he's worked with uh, the American Splendor guy, uh, Harvey Picar, and right. stuff like that. But, yeah, he's, like, a huge name in underground comics, just mostly because he's so perverted. I don't mm-hmm. know. <laughs> mm-hmm. But, yeah, I don't know. This is just one of those movies that I've always known about. Like, I've always seen it in a video store. It has that weird cover of him, like, crouching, and he's all just, like, a sweaty, nerd-looking guy. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I don't like, like, I don't know what, you know, like, it's just one of those weird covers that jumps out at you. And why is it called Crumb? But his last name's Crumb, actually, so... That thing and then um it's just one of those films that i can always watch and i'm just like oddly fascinated by like his his family him and yeah like all his brothers and his like whole family dynamic and just that he's like open about being such a creep and perverted person you know yeah. Like, oh yeah we'll get into that <laughs> but what 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 so what movie did you bring to be in oh that yeah question? so the next one i paired with it was the devil and daniel johnston and we'll talk about that a little later yeah all right so yeah we got uh you brought the perversion uh (laughs) (laughs) the animated perversion yeah which uh it you know it suits you mondo i'm not gonna lie i could see you uh i could see you beating off some of those cartoons (laughs) back as a young child maybe even now yeah no i don't know i'm just well i don't know (laughs) (laughs) we'll get into it Yeah, no, it's a great documentary. Yeah. Right? It's, um, you're the one, oh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I saw it because of you. You let me borrow it. Um, I didn't really know who it was, like, you know, until I saw it again. And I was like, oh, yeah, like, um, Fritz the Cat. I recognize the stuff. Yeah. You sort of recognize it once you see his drawings, mm-hmm. even if you might not know the name itself. or, mm-hmm. or Yeah, uh, and his drawings are like, I don't know, they're like, yeah, I'm sure everyone has seen them, but they have that old comi- uh, old timey like comic style. Mm-hmm. But it's still Robert Crumb. Like if you see his drawings, like they're like kind of crude, but not. But I mean, they're like perfection. Yeah, they're, you they're know, very, they're oh, yeah, almost fine. Perfection. Yeah, like, really re- re- redefined in in, yeah. in how he uses his his penmanship because it's just mainly ink and ink, like yeah. ink and paper. Yeah, they only yeah. It, that's weird too. That was something I noticed this time around watching it. What he just he's always just 
using pen. Yeah. You know, yeah, like he's, he's a, never he's like just fucking, using a pencil. He's, he's a damn master at that <laughs> shit. You just yeah. seen him draw like little stuff when he's just like shading it in. Or just when he's talking to his kids, like um, how to draw, and he, or his him and his son are both drawing the same picture, yeah, yeah, yeah. and yeah. you see his, and you're just like, good lord, <laughs> like his is just like perfect, you know. And his son's is really good. His son's yeah. a good drawer, also, but uh, yeah, he's a good he's artist, getting, but yeah, he's son. getting there for sure. You know? <laughs> yeah. like, he's still pretty young, but, but, but he's he, getting but yeah, there. Yeah, you, you, know? you totally see like what the he influence. means by how to yeah. like uh, emphasize uh, features and yeah. stuff of what he tells yeah. him because yeah. you see that he, you see that Robert Crumb does it. And how much he does it, it really adds his kind of yeah. his own style and his own like it's like this weird dimension. Dimen- the, 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 yeah, they're that's like one of doing pictures of mental too, like, patients, but they make you, them look crazier. Right, that's one right, of the right, things right. where you see his drawings, and then when he's when he's talking to his son and how he's talking about the drawing and the figure, like because it's from like an old like old photo, you know, yeah. like of an Indian woman or something like yeah. that, and like. I like how he talks about those other ones, though. Like, <laughs> like, oh, she's ugly. He's like, I only stuck to the pretty girls or something like that. Right? <laughs> Just the little things he, like, little comments because he looks at it and he goes, Ugh. It's like, yeah. You know what's funny is one thing, I, like, what's really funny to me, and it's kind of the same thing even with Daniel Johnson, it's like, it, he talks about just being so, like, oh, like, I was just so, like, unattractive and gross. <laughs> and they show pictures of him when he was young, and, like, he, like, you know, like, he basically, like, He's like what, like if he was young now, he would be like a cool guy. Yeah, he has the style. He has like the the weirdness. The like, you know. Yeah, he's just a nerdy guy. And then even his brother Charles, like he's not like a bad looking guy. I don't think you know. Like, well, now he's sort of when they interview when, he, when, when he's older, when he's raising, when he's younger, yes, when he's younger. Yeah, when they're looks, all younger, they look it, like pretty normal. Like they like the way he makes it seem is like you. They're gonna show pictures of them when they were teens, and they were just gonna be these like nerdy ugly looking dudes yeah. and they look normal they look fine they look you know he just looks like some buddy holly guy like yeah he, he's pretty like attractive you know what yeah. i'm saying what do you think he looks like though? uh what's they his all name? look like ghouls now they're like cattles i mean there. just like the their i think the depression and anxiety just crippled their yeah, whole, they're, they're they, physically they, they, like they, they, physically yeah. crippled them they seriously look fine younger but yeah. they because they even like look. the the youngest <laughs> one right max uh, yeah, whatever Max. he looks yeah. crazy yeah, he yeah, looks yeah. like he looks like he would be on a wanted poster yeah. <laughs> like you know his haircut just his face the yeah, way his yeah, like least... uh, skull is it's just formed you know yeah. his jaw like everything was crazy yeah in the movie they show that picture of uh, there's like this picture of a crumb drawing they show and he's like this weird little guy like in like side of his brain and it has like all these yeah. wires and stuff that's right. like that reminds me of Max, you know, he's just like this, like on edge, like he's almost on edge, but he's not really, you know, like yeah, just, yeah. So I, know, I mean, basically, like, like basically, he has um, two brothers and, and two, two sisters. sisters. They don't ever interview the two sisters or really go into them. They decline, but, but they, yeah, yeah, yeah they but they do it. talk to the brothers, and the brothers are artists also, but they're basically Robert Crumb is also pretty mentally ill. Um, yeah, yeah, they're all mentally ill in some way which i think yeah. is probably a product of their mother being also mentally ill that's yeah. a whole nother thing it, yeah. and also their father probably was mentally ill yeah. <laughs> and yeah. i'm not like laughing at mentally ill people i'm just saying it, it's a pretty crazy combination that it seemed like you know that that whole family to just be you know uh, robert crumb is pretty well adjusted uh he, it, even though he still has those weird kind of desires you know that you know just an example of how kind of mentally ill they are where his brother charles is telling him how you know, I used to have to fight off the urge to go get a uh, an axe from the basement yeah, and bash your head bash in your head. And they're just both kind of laughing at yeah. that. And then, like, you know, Robert comes just like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> like, laughing. You know, just, like, all nonchalantly. And it's just, like, really, like, yeah. I think it's just, just the way they joke with each other. That, well, that, but, no, yeah. but, but, but he was being serious. Like, you know, he was really saying, like, you know, like, because he was saying, he's like, well, he's like, yeah. And he's like, didn't you say you used to have to, like, fight off the urge to, like, not stab me in the heart or something. He but you're like, right. Yeah, he, and he they... just explains how, like, yeah, that's uh, because my mental illness, like, it made me be bruised by, you know, like my narcissism or whatever he says, you know. And I was like, damn, that's crazy. Like, you're just like, you know, I always thought of like fighting with my brothers and stuff, but never like doing some shit like that. Yeah, like, yeah, no. you know, my bad. What were you gonna say? No, no, no. no. <laughs> I was just agreeing with you how just the way they would deliver that you know so nonchalant they're just kind of like ah ha 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 you know um <laughs> how it's <was> just nothing <laughs> and then even the way the younger brother max talks about how he used to basically sexually harass women in the streets and how he just sort of talks about it's like yeah it was just like this thing like and it's like i had to yeah, do yeah. it like and he's like ugh, and like you know and you and crumb's just like oh my god 
God, like, oh, like, <laughs> and they're just talking about it, like if it's just like them like picking their nose or something, like if it's just like some weird tick like that, yeah, or it's just like some really dangerous, like you know, because even uh, the director asked him, you know, he's like, did you ever rape anybody? And he's just like, he's like, no, no, no. He's, well, he, he explains it like, oh, it takes a lot of groping to get like, to like, rape. You can get there, but he's like, I stop. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, like yeah, he tried to make, like, nuts. make yeah. it sound better, but it's like you're still. Yeah, like, like a sexual like deviant. Right, that, that's awful. You're molesting. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're violating other pe- other human yeah. beings' space that was and kind of privacy. Weird. And so, the, yeah, it was, so he was a, a bit hard to watch, especially because he yeah. just sits on a bed of nails. And so, basically, like it's pretty crazy that, like, you know, uh, they that they all, uh, you know, they all have that talent. Right, they all have that. Uh, I don't know if Matt he drew, but I don't know if he was ever as. Like, yeah, they show his like paintings that he does yeah. later, and the, they're pretty kinda, crazy. Yeah, they're, they're pretty nuts. Yeah. But but um, the whole thing is uh, Charles. You know, Charles is the older brother, and he's the one that makes them draw and do comics and like mm-hmm. like breathe comics. And Charles is the better artist too. Like you see that, and I mean even they think so. You know. Yeah. But Charles is just so like detached from humanity yeah. that he stops doing anything he just yeah. reads and smokes and yeah and what's and what's crazy about that is it because with, with, <laughs> yeah yeah with crumb like it's just like I, I, it's crazy that some that he was able to sort of uh uh with robert crumb he was able to like funnel his art into something like real and profitable or that he's yeah. able to be like an, an artist he was a known artist mm. and people started knowing knowing his comics and stuff like that and he got a bunch of people that wanted to you know wanted artwork from him and uh like it because there's there's nobody that's sane in that family or that's around them that i felt like ever would have been able to guide him in some good way like there was no one to guide any of them in any way you know they all just kind of were just kind of crazy like, you know, they talk about how uh, the older brother was like, you know, he was like, you know, Robert Crumb's telling this story about how he's like, yeah, we were just walking down the street and you just accosted this lady and you're just <laughs> yelling in her face about her spiritual beliefs and you start yelling and all this stuff. And then the mom's like, oh, that was when he was a teenager. And after like, no, he Rob- was 30. Yeah, he's yeah. like, no, he was 30. And she's like, ah, ah. And they just like all start <laughs> laughing, you know? And after like, <laughs> you know, like, and then, yeah. And then the, the brother's like, well, well, give me any reason why I should go outside, you know? Like, he's just. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's why. <laughs> like, yeah, I go outside. but I think that's just really that's just yeah. really funny. Like it's just yeah, that is weird how he like he was kind of able to like stray makes from it that, out sort yeah, of yeah, you know, without like, any kind of like you know guidance or anything. They never interview like some friend or something that was like yeah, you know, I I showed him this or whatever. He kind of just did it himself. He sort of just crawled out of that that yeah. His drawings like talked for themselves. And, right. Like, that's why he like kind of like. Oh, people liked his drawings. So, yeah, like, that's, that's even how he got girls. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. He would draw them, and they would be like, "Oh, like," because he draws like the women very like kind of big and voluptuous and stuff. And so like to them, they were at first they were just like, "That's bad. Why are you doing that?" Like, and he's like, "No, that's the way you are." And he would say that that was like, you know, that that's great, that's beautiful, yeah. you know. And so they all were like, "Oh, okay," you know, they like fall for him for that. Yeah. But yeah. he turns out he's just a freak. Yeah. He's not like a faithful like yeah. husband. He's just a freak putting his yeah. like he just likes piggyback rides. Yeah. Sitting yeah. on feet. Uh, like, Shoes, boots. Yeah. yeah. And like. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny too because he even talks about that where he's just like he's like yeah you know I used to just like love to rub my aunt's feet under the table and I'd <laughs> go sit on my mom's feet like and then I'd go into her like closet and get her shoes when I was a kid and just like sit on them and like touch them off of that. yeah he yeah. was the whole time and, and then he and then he's just like what does it mean he's just like i don't know you tell me like <laughs> yeah. you know and he's just but he's still like into that stuff like, and he didn't know? go to art school right like no you're so that's yeah like, this is yeah. one of the first like documentaries or any sort of like what well, kind uh, of like self-force yeah not um, force not self-force but yeah. brother like, force yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Um, look at the uh, limelight on an artist where you don't really see that you don't see any sort of art institution being a role in that's what i mean his yeah. career he just kind of pushed it forward or no kind of like a guiding peer no. or something where he's like yeah i saw this and i thought yeah like, kind of just he doesn't yeah. talk about like a teacher saying like hey you have talent he well, kind of well mostly his brother for his brother yeah, that's yeah. the only influence he probably had was just his, his brother charles well, that was who, a, like, the whole thing where they go into that that whatever that little thing where they mail in their whatever thing they need to get judged on in order to get what it, he said like it was like a you would get uh, enlisted and paying four hundred dollars for to take classes or a course on drawing or whatever, and they had. To well, yeah, yeah. Everything. Explain it a little more. So, I mean, in this case, people haven't seen it. So, like, it's like a thing where you, it's like a booklet that you would. Right. They have things for you to draw, and you yeah. have to draw them, 
um, Spe- next to it. Yeah, specific specific, specific things. things, specific ways, and then you would send it in. Right. And then they would pick like people to like go to what like a school, right? I- I'm not sure if it was like a school or a course, like just like a okay, like, like a course they were kind of like, oh, you're good yeah. enough to come here now, pay us this money, and right, yeah, like so yeah, 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 yeah. It, was, it was, yeah, but uh, um, that was like uh, that was like a thing that they were doing, like to push themselves, and you know, they didn't need any of that. They just kind of like well, all the brothers, but you know, obviously he's the one that kind of rose above. But this was like the first, probably one of the first films I've seen where I didn't. I didn't see any of that. Mm-hmm. It was just kind of themselves, well, himself really, wanting to like, hey, I want to further my my right. artistic career. Right, and with, with no sort of like, um, I want the big house, I want money, I want right. fame. It's just because I just want to be a better artist. Right. You know, like you know what I mean. Like when his son says like, oh, you already got the the big house and all the money, and he's mm-hmm. like, I'm not like, it's not about that. It's about like drawing yeah about like learn how to draw better well there's you know? a part two where they said something about like a hundred a hundred thousand dollars for something right yeah oh, and then he said he said he turned it down it yeah, was like didn't... when he was doing the zap comics or something like that uh, i'm not sure what there, there's like quite a few things that yeah, they yeah, offered. yeah i mean and he said like, the rolling stones he said yeah. like all this stuff but i mean and they talk about you know and so like yeah, he's, he, <laughs> he's punk rock yeah he's, yeah. Loves, he's, he's punk as fuck yeah, it's yeah. funny though like he oh he does that a lot in this documentary where he like like where he kind of thinks he deserves these things. Like, when he talks about, like, when he got paid for the Janis Joplin cover, it was, like, 700 oh, yeah. bucks. And then right, and then he explains how, yeah. right, and, and then then he explains how the original heart, yeah. got paid, like, got more. 21,000, like, like, 21, like yeah. at so- Sotheby's, it got auctioned off. Yeah. yeah. And, like, but he's not going to do those covers because, I don't know, you know? But then he's just, like, uh, he talks about drawing, like, he can't stop drawing. Like, that's, like, when his, his first wife talks about, like, when they would go out, he would just be always drawing on anything he could, like, the placement, his bus yeah. ticket. Yeah, like it was, yeah. I mean, it all wasn't those about notebooks money or anything really for him, you know. He bought a house in France with a box full of notebooks. Yeah, yeah a suitcase full sketchbooks. Of yeah. yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, like that's. I mean, I'm, I imagine some guy out there is a huge fan, and he knows that those are worth. He probably can sell those for more than that house yeah. is worth. Yeah, you know, yeah. especially original sketchbooks from Robert Crumb. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that would be great, like yeah. to have one of those, you know, because all yeah. those things are great, like him just taking uh, sketches of people just sitting in diners and stuff, like. That, all that stuff is just like, just like I said, they show in the documentary a lot of times of him drawing, you know, and he's just talking and kind of drawing and kind of doodling. And it's just so like, uh, fucking like you, like all that stuff can go and like, could be framed. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And, and this could be worth like millions. <clears throat> These little sketches that he's doing, cause he's just so good. They look so like defined, like <clears throat> the drawing is just so good. Like, yeah. uh, yeah. the portraits he does are amazing. I, I would love to like have a portrait of myself from him. Yeah. <clears throat> to see what he thinks of like what my face is, you know, because <laughs> yeah. yeah. it'd be like some warped yeah, interpretation, the, yeah, you know, all the imperfections. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and it would yes. just be cool to kind of have something like that. Yeah, yeah, but it's it's um it, it yeah it's it's a really cool documentary in that because you are just there with him and he's literally just being raw. Yeah, he's literally really just, candid. Like his, yeah. his yeah. whole family, everyone in the documentary is like super candid. Like, and, and it's I think it's because they're friends, right? Terry Zig. Yeah, Zuboff Terry and, is like a was met him in the seventies because they both like the, those seventy eight records, the old timey kind of like, right, red right, time right, right. blues, like like stuff no one cares about, like yeah. pretty much like. Which is Ghost funny because that connects the Ghost. Yeah, it yeah. connects yeah. the Ghost World a lot. That's yeah. funny. Yeah, and that's how they met Javi Picard because he liked records too and stuff. But yeah, that's he, they were friends before, and they talk about he talks about on the commentary how um, when they went on this trip, just like going record hunting and stuff like that, they stopped at they stopped at uh, his family's house because he hadn't seen him in a while, and that's when he first met his mom, and he actually met his dad. I'm talking about Terry Zigwoff made his met Robert Crumb's dad before okay. he passed away, and Charles. Okay. And then that time when they went to go, when they stopped at the house. Uh, um, Charles's favorite movie was actually playing two blocks away, and they're trying to convince him to go, but he would not go. <laughs> it is Treasure Island that Disney. Oh, that's Treasure right. Island. Yeah, mm. they talk so, about that a lot. And like he's like trying to like talk himself into it, but he just like he can't go. Like he doesn't want to go at all. Mm. Yeah, which I mean, you know, it's kind of like one of those things where he knows. You know, they're all very self-aware of their like depression and mental illness, and like yeah. of the things that they've done, and like the bad things that they're into like you know yeah. they never like try to justify the shitty stuff that they like you know what i mean yeah all the weird kind of per- perverted stuff that they're into <laughs> all the weird fight or apologize for right <laughs> but, 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 that's, but at the same time they're very self, self-aware of it yeah. and they don't 
They know yeah. that it comes from something. They all like are aware that it must stem from something. It yeah. has to be. They just don't know what it yeah. is. And like, not not a lot of people are like that. You know, you watch people who you know, <clears throat> again, they're they're mentally ill. You know, they're they're very un. You know, they're all three of them are pretty much like very, you know, kind of off kilter. They're just strange. They're they're they can't. They're not social. And, and you know, there's a difference between being like anti-social and just being like not social at all you can't even yeah do, you know people don't even want to deal with you you know they talk about how charles no one in school liked him the teachers didn't like him none of the kids liked him <laughs> and he tried to be cool and when he realized that no one was gonna like him either way he just became like a <laughs> shit or whatever you know yeah and then so no one even liked him even more <clears throat> and i thought that was just like crazy because that's just like you know that that's just someone that really that i mean you know that's when you just don't care because you're you know you become that you know you're not mentally ill, because I keep saying that, like, a, but... But there's so, like... You're, like, know. unhinged, you, yeah. you know? Like, it's yeah. like, you don't, you're, you don't, you're not really, you don't care about reality anymore. You're just yeah. sort of like, I don't really care. I'm just going to do what I'm going to do. It doesn't, and none of this means anything, you know? And that's kind of the way Robert Crumb is a little bit, you know what I mean? Like, how he sort of just, like, like left his son, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. he didn't really yeah. take care of his son or anything. Well, he just left his wife. He just went to San Francisco. Well, that's what I mean. Know, like, well, but, yeah. I mean, you know, his wife, his son. <clears throat> also yeah. his son... <clears throat> the guy with Excuse the beard me. and long hair, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, it's yeah. funny because they show them like drawing first, and then later on you you realize, oh, like they don't have a relationship really. <laughs> like you know, like he's like, yeah, he just. Well, left. I mean, the whole documentary, they don't even mention that that's a thing until that moment where it's pretty much late in the documentary. It's like when he's moving to France. About him having a son. Yeah. Right. Yeah, where yeah. they finally show him, and then he even says like, it's not until. Um, well, I think they mentioned her a, a bit when they talked to his uh, his current wife at the time of the documentary, who's also an artist, who's a bit kind of cuckoo herself. <laughs> yeah. um, but, like, they don't even really mention his daughter until they're talking to one of his, like, ex-wives or ex-girlfriends. Yeah, and when she's they're talking like, about love. Yeah, yeah and he's just like, oh, I, I may have said it. I may have just used the word love. <laughs> yeah. He's all, but I don't love anybody. Like, yeah. he's all, the only woman I've ever loved is my daughter. And that's yeah. when I was just like, oh, that's right, he has kids. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I, you don't you don't really emphasize on that until yeah. that moment. And even then, they don't really kind of touch on how, like, how much of a father he is or if he's a good father until you kind of see that little snippet of the son kind of being like, yeah, he just kind of up and left. And now he doesn't, like, want to hug me or anything, yeah. you know, pretty much. Like, yeah. But, I mean, at the same time, it seems, you know, them talking to each other, they seem pretty, you know. Well, I think the son kind of, like, learned w where his place is. Right. He had to learn. It wasn't, like, the other way around where his father came around and was, like, you know, like, he Crumb came around and was, like, I'm going to try. It was just kind of, like, no, yeah, this is all. Yeah, not going to change. Yeah, this is all I can get from <laughs> for him. For sure, so, for sure. So and, we yeah. connect through drawing, you know, which is why he was, especially, too, where he was trying to say, like, see, you have to focus on this feature in order to, you know what I mean? Like, that, I think that's his way to. Of connecting which, with and, him. And, you know, yeah. and which is crazy because, uh, you know, in a lot of ways, you know, people, oh, we, we let that, like, we could let, we let shit like that fly because he's an artist, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If he was just a regular dad no. who just did, like, a nine to five, who just, like, worked yeah. at some, like, warehouse or something, yeah. or whatever, <clears throat> we would just be like, damn, this, that's not cool. Yeah. Like, his kid should, his kid shouldn't have to adapt to him. Yeah. He should, like, you know, but because, like, I feel like Crumb's an artist, I think, you know, it's, it's not that we give him a pass. I'm not saying we, we're giving him a pass, but I think we sort of, for some reason, make our minds believe like that it that okay well he you know he he is what he is like yeah, yeah. he can do that well, I think <laughs> he's <laughs> like a, he's a cuckoo artist he's well, the people, you know yeah. uh people like uh put like the 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 genius level that's on, what i'm saying what I mean? exactly and so you let them do those things because you're just like well family gets in the way of their genius anyway yeah like for the most part you see that in a lot of things yeah. most uh, books and stuff are stories about people who are, you know, who are artists or different like things. Most of their family life was terrible yeah. because they were never around or they were always cheating on their wives. They never were around their kids, never took care of their kids. Yeah. They're more concerned about what they were working on or whatever, you know, mm -hmm. the lifestyle they were living. And so, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, and for some reason we seem to give it a pass because yeah. once their kids get older, their kids have to give it a pass. Cause, look, <clears throat> not in this case because I can't imagine that. Uh, Robert Crumb had a bunch of money to give to his son or something. Right. But I'm saying, like, for most cases, the kids are going to give it a pass because that's who's paying their their way yeah. through life. You know what I mean? Yeah. Your, your dad's, you know, your dad's a piece of shit. He's a rock star or whatever. But, I, I mean, he's paying for my shit. Like, you <laughs> yes. know, he's paying for my apartment. He's paying for my car. Yeah. You know? I'm going to be a piece of shit also. 
You know what I mean? And I, they're like, I'm not saying that that's, but I feel like he was just trying to connect with his dad. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, where his dad's sure. just like, yeah, no, I just like, yeah, well, I mean, let me just talk to you about drawing. Drawing. That's how yeah. we're gonna connect. And so he's just like, oh yeah, I'm not gonna get a hug or anything, but at least I'll get this moment where we can talk about drawing and yeah. And our, he doesn't our even want to give an autograph. Oh yeah, right, in yeah. Comic right. store. Right. Which they, is great. I think that's great because that's a. Uh, that just does that just shows like that again he's punk as fuck he's punk rock like because if you if he was to do that that would just like wipe away any credibility of all that stuff of him turning that turning stuff down because he is trying to be famous if if that's yeah. the case yeah. you know what i'm saying yeah like and so for him to just be like yeah no i don't really do that and it's just like some guy in like a you know a comic book shop right yeah he just that asked him yeah, no, it's just like, why, why wouldn't he just do that for him really quick, like, yeah. on something, on a book that he has there? Yeah. But for him to be like, no, I don't really do that, it's like, hell yeah, yeah. fuck yeah. I would have been like, no, fuck you, man, don't ask me that. <laughs> I'm here filming a documentary. You know what I mean? Well, he, well, the hippies that put out his stuff or what he was famous for, like, in the 60s, like, he wasn't into that. Yeah. Like, you know, like... I think that's really like, funny. That's funny. Uh, that's uh, a, he, he, when he talks about that, it's fucking hilarious. Because he has, like, no, like, like, ideals, really. He didn't, and then he want and then... Uh, they would talk to him about like you know getting girls and shit like that and he didn't care he's like no I'm not gonna get like I'm not gonna have long hair and like I'm not gonna look like a hippie I'm, I'm me right. I'm, Janis I'm, I'm Joplin really... told him to like look more Janis like a hippie Janis Joplin was yeah, yeah. Told yeah it's right. more to what yeah. you're around yeah. right. like, you can get a girl just do this and that and that. he's like no like. but even at that moment where he's talking about that and he's in that diner Again, I'm saying he looks like a guy that if he was around now at this time, like he would get laid all the time. Yeah, yeah. Because in that, what he's dressed like, you know what I'm saying? Like that's he's got a he's got a dope style. Yeah. What is his friend? Uh, his friend calls him. And a big dick, apparently. Yeah. yeah. And a big dick, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Let me. I'm t- I mean, that just that's one of those things. And the thing is, he doesn't even really use it in in the way, right? Like that one. Um, she she run yeah, she was a like publisher, she yeah. was an editor of Jugs yeah. and like all these magazines. <laughs> yeah. She had to talk about how she kind of dated him and had a relationship with him, right. yeah. and that it was mostly just he would like to like piggyback right on him. Yeah. And so this is how like this is how weird this guy is, right? <laughs> he likes to piggyback on on like girls' backs and then what he like um, sitting on her Sit on feet. And um, what was the other thing? She said some other thing. But anyway, that's what like gets him she off. She talks about like him rubbing against her boots a lot too. There you go, yeah. rubbing on boots. Like he likes to grab on their legs, yeah. like yeah. be like on the yeah. bottom. Yeah. And she explains <laughs> the whole uh, like uh, uh, like idea behind it, uh, how like uh, men that like boobs are more like a jock or more outgoing. Extroverts or yeah. are more uh, attracted to like the upper body. Yeah, the upper body. And whereas introverts, introverts are more in the waist. Yeah, because they like to like yeah. look up at mom or whatever. And he was all into like legs. If yeah, anybody uh, thinks this is true, leave us, leave us a comment. Yeah, if you know anything about comment. this. Because uh, when was this? Uh, this? This was in 94. That this was it came out, yeah. It's it came like, out in '94, but when was it? When was that film? Same or like? I don't know. Probably, probably like '93, '92, '99. On, on okay, the, I would say the film looked older. Yeah, I was gonna say like '89 or '90. I saw probably. a lot of '89 on the, but I mean, no, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So let's see. Is it as it, is it the same thing now? You think, ladies? Uh, leave <laughs> us a comment in the wherever where you can. Um, yeah, but that that it's very it's like a strange thing like that. You know, and then even, you know, they talk about uh, eventually how he talks about how the brother Charles was really just obsessed with that Treasure Island movie because he had a sexual thing about that little boy. Yeah. And that that ruined his whole... And, you know, I thought about that. I was like, oh, shit, dude, he's probably a pedophile. And he probably had to, like, stop himself from, like, being one as he got older. Because, you know, he said he said as he as he was older he still was attracted to that little boy and then yeah. it, like well this was what crumb was saying that he told him yeah it was like it an messed, age thing like then, oh he's the same age as me right so yeah well no no he said that as he got older too that that's what i'm saying it child. wasn't that it wasn't oh, like because right. we're the same age it was like oh it was just it was that still specific that, yeah. little boy yeah it was still yeah. that and so like he just said that like yeah and so it messed his like sex life up he never had sex because of right. that. No, no right. sexual desire. and i was just like right. damn like that's just like I mean that's just like a whole level of like screwed up that I can't even like yeah. imagine, like you know, uh, and you know they said that their father was pretty shitty. They don't go too much into that. I mean they do. They talk about their father and their mother a lot, but not as much as like I would like to have heard more kind of I don't know situations or things that they that they were in with their their sisters and stuff. You know, like they don't really get into too much detail like. A lot. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Yeah. The parents are kind of weird. Like they, they, they just talk about the dad how he has like, where he kind of like says he has that like weird thing where he just smiles all the time, and it's like a weird depression thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But and how even, he was constipated. 
Constantly. Oh, that was just like a joke. That was like, I don't know what the mom was going on about then, but yeah, they don't. Yeah, they just talk about like how she was like taking pills and stuff, mm-hmm. and that made her fucking crazy and nuts, you know, being around her and stuff like that. So I don't. Yeah, I couldn't even imagine what like really went on, like right. in that house, you know, like with all those kids and just like. Yeah. Where? Wait. Where are they from? Uh, Philadelphia. Yeah. Was it Philadelphia? Some, yeah. some. Yeah. Some small town in Philadelphia. Yeah. yeah that's crazy. Like. Yeah. And. Yeah, that it's so it's it's a really good like look, I think at like mental illness in like a very yeah. raw form. It is, and, and then but, where like, they're they, not even like uh, you know they're not they're not committed. They're not no one's diagnosed them with that. Nobody's. Yeah. They're just sort of telling you this. Like, yeah, they you know, know Charles is just like people. I'm mentally ill well, and depressed. Ma- well, like, Max, like I'm like, has anyone charged this guy? He's been molesting <laughs> people like everywhere and. You know, he just says it's like no one <laughs> yeah, that, until I mean until that part you know where they ask have you raped him you know but yeah he's just so yeah he's, yeah it's very really, nonchalantly it's he very puts like, cloth just, in his mouth through his ass yeah, yeah. didn't he say like it takes three days for that to be like yeah. shit out or something like that <laughs> oh my while God. he sits on that nail yeah, bed yeah. on the bed yeah bed, bed of nails yeah. <laughs> nail bed he passes a cloth through his body I don't know why it's I don't know. Who knows why? <laughs> yeah, but I, I, you know, this like the 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 documentary we're gonna talk about later really, um, you know, it really does show like these kind of like, I like these anti kind of like mainstream like, you know, Nirvana sort of like you know these sort of like where it's like this real like emotion and real shit coming out into the art. It's not like. A well-written song you know what i'm saying yeah. right. like in terms of daniel johnson even and here too like i mean uh robert crumb's fucking art is fantastic he's not mm-hmm. he's a great artist but i'm saying like the the what's coming out in that is like literally raw emotion there's like <laughs> it's like in this guy's head is what you're seeing basically and yeah. not in like just like a cool like weird way you know what i mean like yeah. oh like i'm trying to be weird you know it's literally he, just like yeah, this no one draws like him you know? yeah like nobody like no yeah. one's gonna think to do those kind of weird those kind of crazy perverted uh things because especially back then when he was doing it you know uh, because it wasn't like, uh, you know, you draw something like that, you're going to think something's wrong with yourself. And I think he knew something was wrong with himself. And so <laughs> he knew that he had to get all that stuff out of his head, I feel like. And so he always has to draw it, which is, you know, it's the same thing with like, uh, you know, Daniel Johnson, how he just has to, uh, he just had to play music. He yeah, just had to do yeah. something. He had to create in some way. And I think that is really, has a lot to do with this, like, you know, with um, them being sick in a way. And it's just mm-hmm. like, you know the stuff going on in their head where it's just like i have to get it out some way and a lot of times people don't know how to funnel that into a safe way and they do like max like his like robert crumb's brother yeah they do it in a more kind of gross horrible violent way or not violent i mean i mean i don't he just talked about how he just devious devious yeah yeah and so and you know and i don't know and same thing with his brother charles also like he should have just kept drawing and said he just went about yelling in people's faces and like <laughs> acting crazy you know what i mean like and just you know he would you know how robert crumb says that every time charles would see him smile that he would say that thing to him which is like oh what a what a uh what a wonderful life it must be or something like that like oh what a joyous oh what a joyous thing it must be well even that story when they're kids when charles finds that like fire truck behind like the dumpster or something oh, yeah. and they want to play with it and like you know robert asks to play with it and then like it's like yeah when i'm done or whatever and then he says he's done and he just, he just like totally destroyed the toy like and like crumb is describing this toy as like oh it's this beautiful like wooden fire truck and blah 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 you know and he just fucking smashed it yeah he even drew out the little comic about it too right yeah yeah that see that's another thing too which is like good about like this uh documentary as well as the devil and daniel johnson is that there's like there's all this like you know like uh there's all this material for it like yeah. where daniel johnson has the tapes that he has recorded of all the shit that happened with his fights with his mom and stuff like that. Here, Crumb, like, he has all these, like, drawings. These old that comics he did. that they made right. as like, their kids. Yeah, it's like yeah. historical. Yeah. 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 And then Charles's uh, notebook say he just looks like, the, uh, what, from seven, you know, like, uh, yeah. <laughs> how he just writes all small and tiny yeah. and stuff like that. And who, it's, like, illegible pretty much. Yeah, know? pretty like, much. It looks like, crazy. It's just like a madman. You know? Yeah, it's like the mad, the ramblings of a madman. Yeah. 
which I feel like uh, this podcast might turn out to be. <laughs> but no, yeah, Crumb is just, and then also just, uh, I think because Terry is such good, I'm, t- I'm, t- I'm t- I, we're on a first name basis, yeah, me, and Terry. Terry. me and Terry. Terry Z. <laughs> <laughs> me and Terry Z. Yeah. Uh, no, but like, I think it's, it, it's also a great documentary too because he has that access. He's actually, you know, friends with them and he's actually yeah. like, uh, he's able to, um, really get that you know that raw footage he just sort of sits there with them and he can talk to them he could be and they, and they you know same thing with like uh where he's talking to his mom on the phone he's like yeah he's like uh he's all terry's gonna come over like he's you know like she knows who he is and like, yeah. you know what i mean like it's it's not like he has to be like oh the camera guys are gonna come or the director guy like yeah another you know? interesting uh, thing during the commentary on the criterion blu-ray of it is uh they talk about um what was i gonna say that uh how crumb like he was just kind of like passive aggressive like during the whole like mm, like mm-hmm. filming thing you know like he talks about like you know, he kind of like he feels like crumb probably didn't want to like let him talk to his family so he was just kind of saying oh no they don't want to do it but like right. you know how they all get into it once they yeah, get there well, you know? yeah yeah they and seem then, pretty like, excited to talk and then like crumb told him like he's like if you weren't my friend i would have been fucking out of here <laughs> you know like just how he's a dick like that you know like yeah crumb is, you know like to yeah things. he seems very much like an yeah. asshole yeah but I mean, like, I don't know, he's, he's weird, like, he's so, like, open, though, you know? Like, like, all his, like, creeping it, like, you know, he just, he's, like, an open book, pretty much. So yeah. that makes him, he's like, more, like... not shy about it, like, yeah. he openly talks, yeah, you're, yeah. you're right. Um, like, he's candid about all his yes. fetishes and things, and, like, and these women are, like, love him, too, you know? Yeah. Even after they're, like, yeah. the only one that's kind of upset is that one uh, woman that he was dating while he was kind of dating his wife the girl the lady with the glasses the sunglasses uh, yeah, 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 yeah 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 the short hair she's yeah. but like, even her like, like oh. she she was still there through the whole like explanation like you know like she didn't have somewhat of a reaction yeah you could tell she was a little bit more stern about she was, it like the only one upset like even his ex-wife a little bit more ups- upset yeah but yeah. she was still all like yeah she, she still like kind yeah. of adored yeah. him you know yeah i think they all really look up to him you know as yeah. soon as you know, as soon, as soon as he pulls out a notebook and shows it to her, she's all like, oh, like, you know, yeah. like literally I feel like that, that those drawings are like, like, you know, they're chick magnets. Yeah. They really are like yeah. that, that him draw, like when he would draw people, like how he talks about when he's in the diner and he's showing the different, you know, girls that he drew and he's yeah. all, oh, this one, he's all, I ripped out a page for one. He's all, yeah. this one invited me to her house. Too bad she wasn't attractive. <laughs> yeah. and he's like, oh, you know, and then yeah. his friend's like, oh, it's a great way to meet girls. And he's like, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it is. I mean, especially if you're that good yeah. and you're yeah. sitting in somewhere and you're drawing them, if they go look at it and it looks that good, they're going to be like, oh, crazy, you know? Yeah, okay. yeah, you're not just some fucking yeah. You're not just <laughs> some like asshole with a notebook. Yeah, not doodling me in some like horrible like ugly <laughs> way. Some you know, stick it's, figure. Yeah. Right, right. It's like a really actually nice like draw. Yeah. Like it's a great yeah. drawing. So yeah, I, that's so basically what I'm trying to say is I'm gonna start getting into drawing because <laughs> quarantine and I got a lot of time. Wait, so would he draw it and then like pass it to them? No, no, no. They, they would see just him. See him. Okay. They would see him yeah. doing it like and with then, the notebook and kind of probably looking at them and stuff, and they'd go over there and like you know. Just see like what he was doing, look, and then you can yeah. obviously see. Oh shit, this guy's like actually a really good illustrator. You nah, know, I'm just like, imagining Jordan like <laughs> draw, like <laughs> somewhere like at a diner just drawing. And, like, oh, I didn't say I wasn't gonna pass them. <laughs> he did. And then watching Jordan just pass them on. I'm gonna curl it. I'm gonna roll it, roll it up into a ball and just throw it at them, <laughs> and then just like have my eyebrows going up and down like rapidly. Like <laughs> so, yeah. But um, yeah, that's um, that's crumb. And yeah. he, uh, he's, uh, I, I think... Well, we this... didn't get to the part where, like, you can, like, think he's, like, a sexist and misogynist and, like, well, Why don't you women. get to it? I'm getting to it. <laughs> you know, but then there's this, uh, the other half that thinks he's, like, this great person because he loves the female body just how it is, you know? that Not, not like, uh, like, you know, plastic surgery or anything like that. He, like, wants women with, like... Like voluptuous thighs and yeah, that you yeah, it's kind of confusing. You know, like Amazon well, women. You so know, basically, like, I mean, I, ex- I mean, explain what why people think he would be a a sexist. Why people think misogynist? Because misogyn- the way, because because of the stories that he tells, in, in like the comic strips, which are like okay, that Mister Natural one, where he gives that where Mister Natural gives this guy a woman, but she has no head and right. she's just all you know, just the body, like the best part, like. Oh great! I don't have to fucking talk to her like you, know. you said the best. Part, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is in the comic. I'm describing. The I'm comic. quoting. Uh, you're quoting yourself. And like you know, and then the guy is like happy and excited, and he's like fucking this like you yes, know. Yes, like, right. Yes. This so, one without a head. 
and then yeah yeah and then he has like a yeah there's a lot of that there's yeah. a lot of um him that women just nag and then yes. like he's just like there's a lot of I even at one point he says like oh I don't hate women as much as I used to <laughs> at one point he says that yeah. <laughs> in the documentary yeah. Yeah, to a woman who used to be with him yeah, yeah. So, he, I mean, uh, you know, he sounds like... Every, and it's funny, too, because he would, like... He has this thing where he just hates obnoxious, loud, ignorant dudes. He's like, why do women like that? Yeah. And it's like, oh, it's just like, but you're that just quieter. You're just like that to them, but just, like, <laughs> yeah. quieter. You're just not loud like that in public. You just do it to them, like, more kind of mentally, like, yeah. in your own nerdy <laughs> yeah. way. You know? Like, it's crazy. Well, yeah, the, the, the lady, his one of his ex-girlfriends talks about how, like... the the lady you mentioned earlier yeah. talks about how he was supposed to be like hundreds of miles away somewhere else and then two hours later she goes to the supermarket and he's like with some other girl mm-hmm. so like he was playing that game you know playing that game of kind of stringing them along but yeah. keeping them where he wanted them so yeah thick yeah. thighs save lives <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's what this episode is <laughs> if you get anything from this then, but yeah uh, so yeah there are some like artists that they interview who like kind of you know they they don't they they praise him they Mm -hmm. say that he's good but they also do talk about how they think he kind of has these weird sick fantasies and these kind of misogynistic tendencies because of these stories and drawings where there's a lot of women without heads and it's mostly the body and like these weird little fucking nerdy dudes use them for sexual things yeah yeah giant women well, the one that made me, the comic that made me feel the most uncomfortable one was the... Uh, Fritz the Cat. The parent one? The parent yeah, one, because yeah. it's the parents having sex with their kids. Yeah. Like, that yes, one that's like, Oh, yeah, that's the one that she used yeah. as an example yeah. of, like, this is just, like, a sick fantasy. But, I mean, look... But it, it's, it, fun. it's, like, it's so just dark that and dumb, funny, like, like, Yeah, it's just, like, that dumb, dark humor. Because but at the same time, look, I, I don't think that he probably does get turned on by that. I, I'm not, like, excusing that he... But I, I don't think that's cool. But I'm saying... It it's, I, it wasn't uncomfortable with me because it's just like ah it's just like some dumb like like mad TV sketch or something, you know like it was, it's it not as weird maybe it was not just as kind of weird <laughs> well because I mean you, okay so you know you're seeing you're seeing these brothers throughout the whole documentary right and then they're a little off right we can say that or they they've you know they've lived these lives that they've gone through very much off so <laughs> extremely off you know and then and then i don't know the, you know you have this this lady who's talking about negative negatively towards crump or robert crumb and then yeah and then they bring up that example and it's just kind of weird and i think even after they kind of pan to him and his daughter like not too long after it was just kind of like uh, like you know he wrote no. this, you know, no, what no. kind of fantasy are you have? No, 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 I have no fantasy. I'm, you, what I'm saying is that he no, did no, this you, comic. you jumped, you jumped, uh, you jumped way too far yeah. in it. There, when they show that, they, they, his daughter doesn't come up until later, like, like way later, later, later. Like, yeah, like, yeah. No, I don't film. think so. I don't yeah, think, I don't think it was yeah. that much later. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah it is. It's like too, t- yeah, because that's like at like pretty much like towards the beginning when they're like oh, they're having yeah, people her, talk his about. Daughter doesn't come out until almost towards the end. Yeah, yeah. No, they show her twice in the film. Yeah, they talk about towards the end. I wouldn't say it's towards the end. Yes. Because, no, there's a scene... Where they first talk about his daughter, or show her, when he, he talks about the first lady that he loves. Yeah, that's, yeah, like right. that's towards way the towards the end. end. That's, like that's not way towards the end. end. Yes, it is. It I, was just, after, I literally watched it, it was after yeah, this, right before But I get started. what you nope, mean. I hate all of you. You guys are wrong. I'm, I'm just saying you're, you're projecting some weird stuff on this uh, on this guy. <laughs> oh, come and on. I, no, oh, no, no. You can't say I'm projecting weird stuff on this guy. Oh, I mean, in that way. I'm saying, like, because, look, I get he is a creep. But I don't think he's like. Uh, I think they would have gone into that in some way if that was some sort of case. No, I don't think he's doing anything with it's his like daughter. It's like that weird thing. Like, is it so for reading those kind of comments? But again, I you know he might be. I, I'm not trying to like defend him or anything. I just I just didn't get that. I think you just jumped really far ahead in the movie because that's <laughs> I don't think that happened when she when she talked about that. No, maybe it's just still in my mind. It was just kind of like ah, it was kind of weird. No, for sure, for sure. Yeah. But I mean, there's a lot of like comic writers and like stand-up comics who say jokes like that, who have families, and you know, Anthony Jeselnik says kind of crazy shit that sort of is like that. And he like, there's a lot of people who like write weird shit like that, and they have families. No, and yeah, I, I wouldn't no. get the impression that they just because they sort of joke around like that that they would do that. It's mostly the people I didn't who say would he be did it. I just. No, no, I yeah. no, I, I get what you're saying, but yeah. but you know, I, I don't think he would put that out there so much if that was like you know something that would happen. But again, I don't know. 
<laughs> I don't know. You again. You're always bringing up these crazy things into the conversation. But the thing is, too, like I mean, he's he's, a, he's the only father here, so maybe he just saw stuff that we didn't really catch. No, for sure. I, I mean, I, again, I, that's why I keep saying I don't know. I'm just saying from what I'm from what I saw in the documentary, from what I can see. Yeah, the documentary because they didn't say have... that. It does. The documentary doesn't say that or right. allude to that kind of thing. No. Right. Um, you you sort of like made it seem <laughs> like it did, and, and it doesn't. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll take you're that. Coming to your own conclusion. But... Yeah, which I'm. That's what. That's what I'm trying to say. Is that I, I don't know for sure, but you, they didn't. The documentary didn't show that, and then go, cut to him and his daughter. But I mean, it was like but a the documentary of... wasn't going to also expose anyone. I mean, literally, the brother talks about how he molested all these women. But and... that's exposing him. I mean, it's not like uh, the director was going to be they like, "All right, gotcha," further. and call the cops. <laughs> I mean, but, uh, they but did, again, they did in the jinx. Have you but seen a, that? But again, <laughs> well, the jinx, not even. I mean, it was just because they. I mean, they probably just had to. It's but again. It, <laughs> like it's it's not like uh because that, that's what i'm saying they're they're so open about stuff like that i can't imagine that he would have said some weird shit about his daughter if he really felt some weird shit about it no you know what i mean yeah no, no i feel you it's just it was just yeah but again i i don't know i couldn't possibly know i would only only she and him could know uh but you're making some wild assumptions here <laughs> no i all right <laughs> No, no, but I get it. I get it. I, I know what you're saying. As a father, I, you're a father. So you watch that. You see that he made some kind of weird incest comic. And then he and then he has like, a daughter. Yeah, I'm not going to say he did any socks. I don't know. I don't know that. I'm just saying it was just kind of weird. No, yeah, for sure. I know. Yeah. I know. We're just yeah. we're just joshing here. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, but no, yeah, it is gross, though. That That's gross. Yeah. I mean, that comic is very gross. Um, it's But it's funny. Yeah, it's one of those weird things. It's like... A, it's, goof. Like, it's dude, a goof. Viol- it's a dude, Josh. Like playing it's violent video games, does that make you violent? Like right. playing no, 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 you're, no, you're absolutely right. And just no, because of thinking that doesn't make you that person. No. You know, and making that comic doesn't make you that. Cr- no, but know, I guess the lady. Look again, nothing in nothing in that. The lady that they interviewed made that assumption, right? No. Well, she just said it was gross and disgusting. No, no, she wasn't trying to say anything like that. She was just saying that he's just. Trying to say how gross he no, is. No, not that it. with his daughter, but like, yeah, saying that the he's comment. kind yeah, of gross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. 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 Okay. Look, and, I, and nothing, you've never said anything in that kind of ballpark, but you said some fucking horrible shit, and it's never been recorded. <laughs> Think about that, all right? <laughs> never in that never in that ballpark, obviously, but you've said some horrible things. Um, we all have, and uh, yes. we're going to say some tonight. Uh, here today. They've already been said. Yeah, yeah. Crumb though. Um, let's should uh, should we rate it? Uh, yeah, I guess. So. Nacho brought down the mood. <laughs> trying to cancel let's Crumb. Let's start with Nacho. <laughs> you know what? We should just t- turn this into the Criterion cancel culture. <laughs> but we're just canceling everybody, baby. We're going back in time. Crumb, you're done. We're coming for you. Nacho's coming are, for you. Are, are we doing our ratings? Yeah. Yeah. Nacho Final thoughts. Do it ratings. Final thoughts. No, this. Uh, it was a. I mean, I don't know how to. I mean, this is this is a, this is a, well, it's a doc, right? This is it's first, a documentary. The, the first documentaries we've done on this, but so I far, think which I, is cool. They were cool though. They were very. They should be rated the same. I think I should. I don't think you should have any sort of prejudice towards docs, even though I I tried to make some before, uh, you know, where I said we shouldn't. <laughs> we shouldn't talk about documentaries. That was prior to this setup, though. So no, that's true. But but yeah. um, but I think you should just yeah, just rate them how you would a movie. You know what I mean? Like, no, I mean everything. It is a movie. It's, 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 it's a movie. No, it's it's, def- it's a movie. It, it was it was good. It, it kept my like I was not familiar with Crumb. I'm not familiar with this next documentary, but I'm gonna say that no, Crumb was good. It it was entertaining. It, I never like lost interest at any point during this because you know it's seen Robert Crumb, which I thought was gonna be. Spe- I mean, the documentary itself is spe- is mostly about him, but it goes into like his his family and the relationships that he has and which like what tells you a lot about him exactly <laughs> yeah. no no it, it, yes but yeah. all that story kind of tells you like this is why he is the way he is and no it's it was <laughs> it's a good documentary i i mean i like how punk, jordan said it punk, how punk rock robert crumb is yeah, yeah. even him like Punk as fuck. Making fun of people wearing logos, like that guy's wearing Adidas, like this and that, like you know, he's like, yeah, why, right why there, would yeah. they, you know, that I enjoyed punk that. That system. was like the, to me, that was like the most. Punk he's moving rock. to like, France for Christ's sake, yeah, you know, to get out of America, yeah, because like, he doesn't like the culture here. Yeah. He's just kind of like he, he's, he's punk rock, hundred percent. Anyways, we're all wearing logos, by the way. <laughs> even like as far as like 
before this, the only the only reason I, I guess when watching the documentary, the only reason I knew about him was because of Fritz the Cat in the movie comic I kind of knew about. Which he hates. Which he hates. And he killed off his character as soon as that was put out. That's like, great. That's, that's, that's punk how rock. Much Again, he, punk is fun. Super punk. You know, yeah. so. Anyways, I would rate this four ice picks into Fritz the Cat's head. Hell yeah. Love it. Cool. Diego, what are you thinking? What are you thinking on this doc? Kadako. Um, I like documentaries. I, I, I enjoy documentaries. <laughs> all right, I like good. that. <laughs> that's it. I'm that's glad all you like them. No, I, I like that. I like that you guys brought documentaries in. Um, and I didn't really know much. Oh, about mom, that. I, I said not that. by Jordan's choice. <laughs> well, that, you know, in general, we brought them in. But I, I, um, I didn't oh, really know. Me? <laughs> I didn't really know uh, anything about uh, this artist. Uh, I had seen his drawings. I think at some point because I, I remember look uh, one. When you see the uh, the stuff that he draws, I was like, I've seen stuff like this before, but I never, I didn't know the name, I didn't know anything about it, so it was a good watch. Um, I like how, yeah, how much it gets into the family dynamic that he has, um, and I like uh, just the overall like kind of feeling you get from the documentary. It kind of brings you in more, and two, it doesn't paint this picture of an artist that like bougie or anything like that like he is who he is he's not trying to be any anything else he's not trying to be punk as fuck yeah you're right um that was that was probably what kind of reeled me in more so um but yeah it, it's a good it's a good documentary i'd probably watch it again um i'm not sure if i would recommend it i don't know i don't know if i would recommend it to specifically anybody but artists wow. for sure should watch it artists people in the art scene should watch it and get like a I guess like a dynamic from like different perspectives that you don't really necessarily have to go to art school to be a talented artist. It's just about how much you want it, I guess. Um, and I'm going to rate it 3.5. Okay. That's All it. right. Um, let, we'll save Mondo for last because he brought it up. Um, right. I'm going to say this is one of my favorite documentaries uh, of all time. Top, top three favorite documentaries of all time. Crumb has become, because of this documentary, one of my favorite artists of all time. Um, just all his, I wish I had just had all his notebooks, everything. Yeah. Uh, the great thing about this documentary is that, they, like, again, I just love that unfiltered look at uh, a, a family of mentally ill people um, that, you know, it shows you that kind of, you know, the dynamic of maybe why he might be the way he is, you know? You know, there's no definite answers there. You can't really say that that's, that is why. Because, again, you know, he, it's crazy that he was able to make it out of that. Able to kind of live on his own, do his own thing without, you know, becoming some sort of, uh, you know, sexual deviant. Uh, pulling people's pants down in the subway <laughs> like his other brother. Or uh, a homicidal, suicidal maniac like his older brother mm -hmm. uh, who lives with his mom and just doesn't do anything but stay in bed all day. Like, he's able to dress himself. He's able to have, like, a, you know, like a, a, st a sense of style. He takes care of himself he can have relationships with women and stuff like that and so i think it's a really good look at that and how that all kind of comes together uh I, I would recommend this to everybody actually I, I think documentaries no matter what the subject matter i think everyone should check them out um especially about like uh you know kind of on the fringe artists you know like uh, off the grid kind of you know he's he's an everyone knows who crumb is I, I feel like that probably would listen to this maybe not but uh, you know, if you know about, like, underground comic books, maybe. Right. But even then, you know, I just know about him, like, you know, like we have talked about from Fritz the Cat, just the album cover that he did for Janis Joplin, just different things. Mm -hmm. And so I would recommend this to a lot of people, actually. I'd want them to see this because, I'd, it, again, it's just a good kind of look at, like, what we deal with in terms of, like, some artists are like this, you know? They, yeah. They're not just, you know, regular uh, people that are just kind of going through life they're dealing with some pretty crazy things and a lot of times crazy family dynamics yeah. uh, a lot of artists deal with that so yeah so i really love this uh documentary it's it's getting um let's see it's getting five punk as fucks uh from Damn. me and that's uh good. that's because I, another thing to all you fucking fake ass punk motherfuckers out there need to watch this shit <laughs> and see what it's like to be really punk all you fucking <laughs> mohawk back patch fucking <laughs> punk ass bitches <laughs> this is how you be punk we don't give a shit about any of that crap punk ass bitches <laughs> you, no well actually pose your punk ass bitches yes, cause you're not a real punk you're you're but you're a punk ass yeah whatever 
Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Watch, you gotta watch this, and then watch the next next doc we're talking about too to see how to be punk rock. Because all your shit's <laughs> whack. Your shit's weak. Mondo, what'd you think? Of? <laughs> well, obviously, That's a good segue. I, obviously, I like this documentary. Obviously, yeah. Because I brought it to the to the pod. Well, I, I mean, you know, uh, Diego brought Valerie in her week of wonders. Oh, and he so didn't I like guess, that. We all didn't like that. You I, know. I don't want to interrupt you, but I'm going to. I mean, okay. So I brought up that weird part, whatever. What but I, I still enjoyed this documentary like a lot. Yeah, I, that, I just want to emphasize yeah, no, that I really that's, like it. Like I want that's to what add I'm this saying. collection to like that's, my I, movie collection. Like I mm-hmm. really like this. That's what I think the difference between documentaries and movies are. Is that like for instance, the uncomfortable stuff we didn't like in Valerie and Her Week of Wonders. You know that that's really like we're just like oh, I'm not gonna watch that again. I don't want to do that. Yeah. But documentaries, it's like this. You're, you're this is just a real subject. You're doing, yeah. This isn't the director kind of putting that on you. Yeah. This is just yeah. him just you know, showing you what these people are, you know? The director didn't write this and say, like, oh, I want you to be this weird pervert. You know what I mean? So I think that's that's why it yeah. is um, why you could like, I feel like, this more than you would like something that does make you uncomfortable with it. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, Well, so. I mean, I watch fucked up shit, but whatever. This movie, I mean, this documentary. Is- <laughs> You're a Lars Van Troyer fan. Yeah, know. I was going to say, I brought up these fucked he up loves all the, loves every, He loves everything but Von Troyer. <laughs> I mean, no, yeah, he like, loves Von Trier. He loves. He hates everything but Von Trier. It's got to be so, fucking Von Trier. You can throw a words. baby out the window, but you can't. Yeah, yeah no. Yeah, so I got to take back most of what I said. No, but I... And, yeah, I... Really you already gave your goddamn... I know, what I know. I just want to make Mondo. Mondo, Mondo, Mondo like, what do you got to say? Yes, oh, cool. Well, I like this film a lot. I mean, it's one of those movies where I can just always watch it, like, no matter what mood I'm in for some reason. I don't know why, but I can. And, uh... I don't know. I just like I like Crumb. Like I didn't know much about Crumb before. Like just a little bit, like surface stuff. But I mean, still even kind of surface stuff because I never really even read any of his comics. But I've always wanted to. I just there's just so much. Is where do you start? You know. Mm-hmm. But anyway, like uh, yeah. I I don't know. Everyone should watch this documentary at least once. It's just like I showing agree. you how like I mean how you don't have to be a, the person society wants you to be. You know, like. You could just be yourself, and you'll find kind of like-minded people, too, you know? Like, Crumb found like-minded people. Like, he got out, like, he kept drawing, and that's another thing. He, like, he never stopped drawing, and you see Charles stopped drawing, so, like... Yeah. I mean, not that necessarily ever drawing was, like, his dream, but it just became his dream. Yeah. And that kind of... It's one of those things, too. It's, like, don't stop, you know? Like, don't right. stop yeah. doing... You know what you want to do. You know, Charles no might matter have went what. a different way if he might have kept going. Yeah, exactly. And he was the better drawer. Like he's right. like, you see his like Treasure Island like comics and like the weird folding thing. It's like so gross to look at, but so like. No, I loved it. I love that shit. If I could get my hands on those things, like to, that would be great. But that's the thing. Like it's like, I think it's gross, but I can't stop looking at it. You right, know, like right. it's like enthralling. Like it, it puts you in a weird trance almost. Like yeah. you know, it's part of like the whole human dynamic to it. You yeah, know, like just like morbidly interested in stuff that you don't you know yeah. and then th- another thing is when they show his comics is when the word bubbles just started taking over too and it was barely like any like uh any comic left mm. <laughs> it's just like all huge like but yeah i yeah i love this documentary i was kind of going between four and a half and five but i gotta go with a five because it's always like i don't know like i can always watch it like there's no bad time to put this film on well, unless you're clinically depressed, at a, yeah. or unless you're really depressed at a really bad time in your life, don't put this on. <laughs> um, you might get some ideas. But yeah, and that's also that also goes for our next documentary, <laughs> yeah. Mondo. What yeah. are we talking about? All right. Well, now I brought uh, the Devil and Daniel Johnston, and this is a documentary from 2005. It was directed by Jeff Furzig. 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 I believe. He just Fierzig. did a documentary a few years ago called author the jt Leroy story that's right which was about this woman uh laura albert that pretended to be this boy that was like i don't know just off on his own like a teen like you know doing all these weird like i don't know drugs like just i don't i forget the whole story i saw part of it i didn't watch i don't think i saw it to the end but it just like he pretty much like um like faked this whole personality and stuff and like stars and everybody were tr- like like not in on a joke but they got fooled by this woman uh, oh, laura wow. robert there's a movie with uh kirsten stewart kristen stewart uh-huh. and uh kate blanchett where kate blanchett plays the author and 
Kristen Stewart plays someone pretending to be the JT. Yeah, the uh, the, the character. Yeah, because yeah, uh-huh. she she's a woman and right. But yeah, it's supposed to be like a boy or like a girl. I don't know. But that's not what we're talking about. But that's today. not what we're talking about. We're talking about the devil, uh, the devil, and Daniel Johnston. That's who is, not uh, what I watch, at least. <laughs> but yeah, sorry. Another mentally ill artist that makes is, music this time. Makes music. He's a, or he draws too. He's oh yeah, he does. That's, that's right. right. And makes films. Films. Yeah, that's does, right. How he does I it all? He's just that. an all around creative person. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Hell and yeah. Like and never stopped. Never stopped stopping. Until he had to stop. Yeah. R.I.P. Is Crumb? Crumb's gone, right? No, Crumb's still alive. Still Crumb's still alive. kicking. Hell yeah. Charles but but R.I.P. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Daniel Charles Johnson. Crumb. R.I.P. Charles Crumb as Wait, well. Wait, he died last year, right? I think I looked that up. Who? Daniel Johnson? Charles oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was last year, yes. Yeah, last year. It was 9/11, last year. 9-11, yes. I think. Yeah. I saw that date. Yeah. Just recently. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's that's the music's 9-11 right there. Daniel Johnson going down. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so da- the story of Daniel Johnson, he's a young guy, gets... Gets to Austin. He's like in that whole '80s thing. He gets on MTV, but by chance, yeah. You know, people hear his tapes, his homemade like recordings that are pretty crude. Well, you're, you're jumping about a lot. Yeah. You're jumping all over the place. <laughs> all right, let's I'm start. Just explain. No, no, but I'm saying, but but he's uh, all right. So he's but he's a piano player, right? Yes. He's a piano player first. He he's he's a young kid pl- making like these like songs with mm-hmm. piano making these like little videos. Yeah, he's and, good at. And, he's actually good. At he's piano. very good at yeah. piano. He's making yeah. these really. Really interesting, like lo-fi kind of like really just great songs. Yeah. Songs that people try to re- have been trying to replicate ever since. Yeah, it'll be every indie kind of lo-fi little uh, solo act where he they yeah. call themselves something. They've been trying to do this, and it sounds. Yeah, no all the covers not. leaves the like the whole like yes, there's essence no essence of. Daniel Did they say Johnson's... there was like 150 artists that have covered him or something like that? Or yeah, um, yeah. Like... you like literally have to not know how to play. Yeah, the guitar so that it sounds as good as Daniel Johnson. Yeah, like you know what I mean. You have to be a sloppy guitar player. You can't be a good guitar player and yeah. play like uh, uh, like uh, tear stupid tears. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it just has that like. It has yeah. like well anyway. But so he's doing that. He's playing piano, and then he sort of starts making these tapes, and he's going around, and he's. Giving him the uh, artists, giving him the artists and, stuff. artists and stuff, and uh, he did. Where did he start? He didn't start off in Texas. No, he was. Where do they say? It? I he became famous in Austin. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's where he yeah. started. But, but off. they, was, but that's goes, where they, they, uh, they end up in Austin yeah. some point, right? Aren't they in like other places? Well, he yeah. goes, he goes away to college, comes back home, then goes to like a local college, and then he moves in with his. His siblings was it? In but that's Arizona? not in, his brother. And then his is sister. it in, is it Arizona? Is it Arizona? I believe he lives with his siblings in Arizona, yeah. but he doesn't go to college in Arizona. No, he's no, just no, there no. for the summer. Right. That's okay. after his first yeah. year of college. Goes there for the summer, and then he becomes a carny. Okay, yes. that's right. Yes. <laughs> that's that. Yeah, okay, he so he becomes a, and then yeah. so he becomes a carny. And he gets his ass knocked out right. because he's taking too long in a porta potty, right. <laughs> and he ends up wandering into a hospital in the, in the, the a church. Cr- a yeah, church. A church. Church. And, and the carnival leaves him. Yeah. And so where he's in Texas at this point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's now where, he's in Texas, and so there. that's where he sort of just kind of lays his hat because yeah. he just got left there by the by the, yeah. by, the right. by the circus. Right. Mm-hmm. And um, is this then, where he worked at McDonald's? He starts he, he to later, yeah, yeah, eventually, he later eventually and that's where you, yeah, yeah, and so and and then basically he decides that he's gonna play guitar once he actually starts getting a little bit more fame, right? Once he passes those tapes of there's him with the piano, there's a certain thing that there's a certain thing that happens that he starts playing guitar. I think just because well, he's I think in Austin, the that's whole what I'm scene, saying. Yeah. yeah, it became like he noticed the scene of his smaller guitar players. Yeah, so nobody's started, with a piano, so he wants to play guitar, and yeah. so he gets sort of like kind of this local kind of underground notoriety based on the stuff he's playing on piano mm-hmm. and then uh then he just decides to play he's gonna play guitar right and, and he he's not good guitar, at it yeah. like and everyone notices that but yeah. it still doesn't matter because his shit's extremely raw like we were saying it's punk as fuck yeah mm-hmm. and it it comes from a place where there's no there's no editing for any of us there's no, you know what I'm saying. He doesn't yeah, edit he the no songs yeah. to make them good for us or for someone to to sign him to a label. They're or, like or, almost stream of conscious. And, and, yeah. and, and, like, you know, and one of the guys says at one point that they, you know, you could listen to that and you could hear the Beatles in a lot of ways. You can, a lot of ways you can, because he's a very good songwriter. Yeah, like his tunes are very catchy. Daniel Johnson has very catchy tunes. It's just that you know he couldn't put together like some huge orchestra to like yeah. do this stuff. But just a simple tune on guitar and piano, like, it's very catchy. It's, like, really good. 
Did they say each tape was different too? Because he would have to like. Yeah, he had to re record it. it. Uh, yeah, it wasn't. You couldn't make wouldn't... copies of the tape. Yeah, you yeah. Had to, like play it again. Which is, much. again, punk it's as like, fuck. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Daniel Johnson and That's crazy Robert too, because I, I wonder fuck. how they decided on which. Because re- now you can just like pick up Hi, How Are You and Yippee and whatever. But I wonder which one they decided on. Like, probably what whichever you? one they could. Like, they sounded the best, on, maybe. Yeah, right? like, they probably had like a few, just whatever one sounded the best, I imagine. Yeah, I'm sure. Like a compilation of like whatever. Yeah, yeah. like they took whatever. Because, I mean, that's the way it sounds. They, they never all sound the same, yeah. uh, the songs. They, they have like different quality of loudness and like volume. Mm-hmm. And, well, yeah. I said the same thing, loudness and volume. <laughs> um, yeah, but I think my, my favorite thing about this particular documentary is that it just goes through his whole life, right? It just starts yeah. from yeah. when he's a baby and it basically goes up until he's like... Uh, you know, there's really nothing happening with him, basically. Mm-hmm. He's pretty much retired at that point, uh, in a way. Getting attacked by dogs. Getting attacked by dogs, <laughs> yeah. walking down the street, living with his parents, like, kind of old. Playing uh, with the worst band. Yeah. Playing with a horrible band that, oh, you know, I, I, you know, I kind of feel bad about that. Let's talk about that really quick, mm-hmm. all right? If you guys haven't seen The Devil and Daniel Johnson, you know, it, it's like, so, Daniel Johnson is like this legend to musicians, you know, mm-hmm. around mm-hmm. Austin, especially, and around certain scenes, you know? Mm-hmm. And at one point he's old, he's he's pretty big, he's uh, he's very sick mentally, he can't really do things for himself, so he's living with his parents, and he's just out walking, and he's getting attacked by dogs. And this young band called the Nightmares, right? Yeah. They yeah. see him, they help him, and they they say that he was just like, oh, do you guys play instruments? And they're just like, yeah. And they just like, are you Daniel Johnson? And he's just like, yeah, like, let's practice. Mm-hmm. And they end up practicing with him. Like, so it's just like, imagine like, you know, and they knew who he was. And they were just like, oh, shit, it's Daniel Johnson. Like, this yeah. is, like, crazy. Like, it's just, like, imagine, like, I don't know, like, you know, it, I'm trying to think of, like, an example for people that, that don't really, like, know Daniel Johnson that might, uh, all right, because, uh, you know, everyone loves this band. Imagine you're driving down the street and you see Flea getting attacked by dogs, <laughs> right? You jump out and you're just like, who is this guy? Not a Flea, Flea. Yeah, Flea, <laughs> Flea from the Red Hots. And then you, you're just like, who is it? You're just like, oh my God, you help him. He looks at you and he's like, you guys play in a band? And we're, you're just like, yeah. We're like, Are you Flea from the Red Hot Chili Peppers? He's like, hell yeah, well, let's jam. And you end up jamming with Flea because he's living yeah. with his parents in Austin, Texas <laughs> or in Texas somewhere. Yeah, and, that's and a really weird story. When the, I mean, yeah. It sounds so made up, I guess. Yeah. It does. Yeah, it, does it does sound very made up. It sounds like they knew where he lived. Yeah. They went and they probably bugged him. And because he's... They sick those dogs on him. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, we're going to get him one and way And because or he's, you know, he's, you know, sort of not very uh, well. He's mentally ill. Yeah. That he's just gonna want to play music with whoever's gonna like ask him. He's yeah. kind of like a little kid too, even as he's older. You know? Yeah, yeah. Like he can't do things for himself. You know, he has. He's like, always wants to go shopping. <laughs> like you know, like his parents talk about how he wants to go shopping. Yeah, exactly. But I, that, yeah, that that's what that's what I wanted to bring up is that like I think that kind of um, I I didn't like that. I didn't like that they. I felt like they were taking advantage of him. What do you guys think? The like, band. The band. Yeah, I, yeah, like, I didn't like it either when I, I when I heard it. Like, it was just one of those weird things. And not even like, the music. I mean, the music's not even. It's not good. I'd rather just have him play the guitar and yeah. sing. Yeah. But, but I'm yeah. saying, like, do you think that that's like taking advantage of this person? Like, because you know, he's he's not well. Like, well, I felt like maybe later on in his career, that's just kind of the case. You know, I mean, because he wasn't well, and I I don't know if I mean people maybe didn't understand fully how not well he was in the head. You know, like. I think they knew. He they was knew. living with his parents. I mean, they could not. You could once you just meet him. I think. Well, you could tell. your question because they don't even your even question in the documentary. Is in they don't kids. even. You know I'm saying, saying like, yeah, that's I'm what saying I mean. like that was ongoing. Like yes, it was. Yeah, for sure with those kids. But like, I felt like that was probably later on in his life too. Like with the labels and all that shit. You know, this guy wasn't well. You know, and people were just taking advantage of him. I think at some point. Yeah, there's probably people who cared about him. But for not sure. like that, though. Yeah, I feel like the only person that ever gave a shit was his on again, off again manager. manager. Like, he yeah. seemed like the only one that. Yeah, yeah you know, you he's know. his ride or die, really. Like, in, yeah. You know, yeah. even after he got fired for many years, he still kept pushing his art. He said, I couldn't listen to those songs, but the art, I would always want to get my hands on. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah, so, uh, yeah, and, and this goes into mental illness as well. Because Daniel Johnson also suffered from bipolar disorder. He was, uh, uh, manic depressive uh and what else did he say he says a lot of stuff um but yeah so he would and then he sort of kind of fell into this whole so it's called the devil and daniel johnson because he falls into this whole kind of the the devil's after him trip he kind of loses his mind and he thinks that the devil's trying to get him 
every time something like goes against him he like blames the devil and it's great that this documentary has all that all the recordings that he has yeah like he has recordings of that moment where Sonic Youth is trying to get him to go home. He's hanging yeah. out with Sonic Youth in yeah. New York. In New York. Kind of loses his mind, wandering around. They got to go find him. And they're like, we need you to get on a bus and go home. And he's just like, my manager just hung up on me when I told him not to tell my parents. Don't you see? Like, and he starts yelling, don't you see that the devil is trying to keep me out of New York City? <laughs> and it's just like, you know, yeah. there's like, it, it's just, it's so crazy because it's like, you know that that again with that like that um there was really nobody there to sort of harness that genius because when he went like that everyone who sort of had him around just was like eh, he's losing his mind boop see you later push him away yeah until he's okay again and then we'll come back and uh that's what and, it seemed to play out as. yeah yeah it was a i mean it really did seem like you know obviously besides his parents but it was mostly people just being like, oh, he started to lose his mind, commit him, and we'll, we don't want to deal yeah. with him. Yeah. But when it wasn't that, they were just like, oh, man, he's a genius. I want to be around him. I want to I want to listen to his music. You know what I mean? But when he started acting like that, it was just kind of like, eh. You know? It was like, eh, Sonic Youth didn't want to deal with him. Butthole Surfers don't want to deal with yeah. him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it was like, the only time he could perform, though, right? Because he would have to, like, he would take, uh, like, if he had performances or, like, recording, like, stuff like that, he would be off of his meds purposely. He thought, yeah, he time. felt like he, he felt, had to be off his meds to perform. Yeah. I think yeah. he felt like he needed to he would take it that. off, like, week, yeah. weeks at a time. And well, I mean, when they show that footage, when he first kind of starts to bloat up, yeah, uh, you know, because he's, like, really skinny, but when they put him on the med- medication and they're talking to him and he's just staring at the camera and, he, and they're just like, oh, is it hard to write songs? And he's just like, yeah. like, But then he still writes a good song. Yeah, he's trying yeah. to write a song. Yeah, he like, still writes dude, a good, dude, dude. and it's just like, yeah, you, you just got it, buddy. <laughs> like even the, you know, but 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 you're looking at him and he, his face looks different. He yeah, looks like, this his whole demeanor is yeah, like, he just uh, like, he's not he's like not there. Like he's yeah, there, but you can tell like there's nothing behind his eyes. Or, right, you know, and he's yeah. aware of it too. Yeah. He's just like, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, I'm just like, I'm not, I have nothing. Like I'm just right here. I have he likes the head. acid. The acid was yeah, <laughs> yeah. He enjoyed it. The yeah. Acid, yes. Yeah. He was getting high too. He liked smoking. Pot. Was that once he saw the devil after the acid? I believe that's when he sort of, kind of, really uh, started tripping on that. Yeah. On the whole mm-hmm. devil and like uh, he's like the afterworld exists mm-hmm. and like all this kind of stuff. The, the number nine from the the Beatles song. Yeah. And uh, I was actually going to bring up too the fact that he's really religious too, which plays a, a, yes, a role into the music religious. and why he's so sprung on the devil and 666 nine the number nine yeah and all that um because it comes back from being such a religious like being a part of a religious family um i think and then and then his parents were really like yeah dominant yes they like that come kind of uh we brought that up in the last film his mom seems so sweet though yeah, she did seem sweet, but to she, he seemed to, yeah, until it was recorded. She knows how to talk shit. <laughs> yeah, especially, especially she knows how to talk some shit. But Those Christians know mention, how to talk some shit. They, they do mention the meaning shit. Kinda, <laughs> he would kind of like push her to that point. To like he wanted to get those recordings like his friend mentions them, oh you know come I mean? on he was just playing what are you taking the side of the crazy christians here no i'm just saying. i'm just joking i'm kidding no <laughs> no yeah you're right yeah, yeah he was like he would go out of his way to get her man yeah 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 for yeah, sure for sure but i mean she talked some shit yeah no she did <laughs> yeah and christians can talk some son. shit yeah she's worried about her son no yeah of course of course no no she her parents best... his parents are great yeah I love they his had parents. the best interest for him like you know they kind of like yeah they want they're like these religious people you know like i mean whatever that's fine you know yeah no it's no you big know? deal about that i'm just kind of yeah joking. it just sucks i think just at that time like yeah like for mentally ill people you just get committed you know you get yeah. these pills like, right okay and then they find out he's on the wrong pills Shit, and, like, that was and that like breaks their heart too you know like, yeah yeah because they just want because they do want to be fun, right you know? they're not trying to um dumb him down or yeah. make him like be a vegetable or anything yeah. like they were sad about that like they yeah, hated yeah. that when they said that he was a vegetable you yeah. know and that's what yeah that, that's why i was like yeah like uh yeah i was just like damn his parents are great yeah. like because without his parents he would he would probably be uh, been dead like a long time ago yeah, yeah really yeah. because there nobody would have taken care of him nobody yeah. wanted to again i bring that back it's one of those things like even one of that uh this guy at the interview i think he's uh he works for like the austin newspaper or something right, right, right. and he talked about how he's just like i have contempt for people who talked about how they were around Van Gogh and all these great artists that were crazy oh, yeah, and they yeah, just the put him off to the side and just like 
you know, didn't yeah, like he care. Talks about that, and he's yeah. just like, and that's what I did. Yeah. He's like, Daniel Johnson was crazy, and I just did the most pedestrian thing. I committed him. I said, yeah. I don't want to deal with him. You know. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, and that and that's pretty much what everyone in his life sort of did. You know. Yeah. yeah. Especially like, yeah, people would just kind of string him along, not string him along, but just kind of be like, yeah, like come around, hang out, and then as soon as he kind of had a little weirdness to him, they're just like, ah, get this guy out of here. Yeah. You yeah. Know? Like even yeah, they his... couldn't handle his. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's under- punk as fuck. His under- can't handle punk. I mean, as it's fuck. understandable, but yeah, they really like they. A lot of them regret not trying hard enough. You yeah, know, to get him the help he really needed, you know, right, and be there for him, you know. Yeah, when, and just when, try to understand they, what he's when doing when they like, needed him, like just visiting, talking to him, like, you know. That was another thing too. He would be in and out of hospitals, and nobody would go visit him. You know, yeah. nobody talk. You know, oh, so Kurt Cobain was wearing his fucking shirt. Like, so what? Like, yeah. you know, what does that mean? Like, yeah, Kurt Cobain never it. like like went and visited or like gave him money or something yeah. give him money Kurt. Oh, well kurt's gone too uh, <laughs> yeah. buy another shirt damn it. You know buy I mean? it. You like, they're trying to make this big old deal about all these people are wearing down john shirt it's like they don't if they yeah. gave a fuck they'd be right there when he's performing or they'd be yeah. over there like you know yeah the only like, one was his brand manager on tour probably, that's what i say, that like, whole, like mountain dew song yeah, yeah. i said it to the pepsi company <laughs> <laughs> yeah that one guy i wish i could remember his name yeah. um but yeah, he was like he has he literally started a record label just to put out Daniel Johnson yeah. stuff, and he's right. He says it at the end of the documentary. If he wouldn't have kept going, even after he got fired, that music wouldn't be out there. Yeah, yeah. you know, it would have got lost. Like he's the one who have made duplicate all these tapes that are just mm-hmm. everywhere. Yeah, and that's how those everything's getting everywhere. You know what I mean? I mean, obviously, I think the record label that he was on put out like a bunch of shit again, right? They reissued Fun, and I think yeah. some stuff like. Yeah, but then there's the when he gets signed to Atlantic finally. That's right. Speaking and then of, oh. they only sell like five thousand copies. Well, that's what I'm talking about. Atlantic. And they like, booted him. They put that. They put that album yeah. fun out, right? That's uh, yeah, really, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. My favorite. Yeah, I think was, they they yeah. redid it. They put it out again with yeah. like more stuff on it. Like you know. My favorite things. though was why he turned Electra down because Metallica was signed yeah. to it. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 Every one of their songs. He's like, listen to these lyrics. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that's <laughs> like he had those like morals and like yeah. Yeah. punk rap. That that's what so I'm fucking good. saying. <laughs> Same thing with Crumb, like that, you know what I mean? Like to just be like, you know what? Oh, nah, God. even though even though both of them it's pretty much it's not really punk rock, it's mental Ill- illness. But that's p- p- punk rock is a mental illness. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's like, you know what I mean? That's why like, he's not dead. <laughs> It's like for him to just be like, you know, like I'm like, he's just like all anti everything. Everything's the devil. And he's just like, I love Mountain Dew. Like yeah. praise Mountain yeah. Dew. Like God brought me Mountain Dew. Here's some sign. He's in a mental institution. Like that's, and then he was going to get signed while he was in a mental institution. Yeah. Like, I don't even think that's ever been done ever. Like, yeah, you it's have like all, a movie thing. You yeah. Know? That's a, like, that's like, that's, a, crazy, they, that's, un- that's an unbelievable thing. Yeah. Like to me that you because I mean he had so much music that they didn't even need him to make new music yeah. they just need to get all his tapes and put them out you yeah. know what I mean and that, and then that's another thing too about this documentary is that I don't even think you need to really like his music to enjoy this it's just a really good portrait of like an artist mm. that like you know just sort of you know kind of just kind of just stumbled his way through to fame in a way yeah. you know yeah. what I mean like not that he didn't work harder that he wasn't talented but you know, he just kind of was in the right place at the right time in a lot of situations. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know? he, he like he put he like made himself be on MTV. He was not supposed to be part of that. Yeah, That's, yeah. That, yeah. You know, like he even his he performance. Forced himself, yeah, he yeah. forced himself on there. And actually, now that you touched on that, I mean, I wanted I wanted to like his music so much because I had heard some of oh, his I was, stuff. I was going to ask you. Guys, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I had heard some of his stuff before. Uh, when I worked at Vans for a little bit, one of my coworkers put it on when we would do like shipment and stuff. Yeah. And I was like, who is this? You know, it sounds terrible. <laughs> and, but I mean, I understand why it sounded that way. You know, it's like a purpose for it, you know? And yes, it's the most thing punk is, rock. No purpose. He just sounds like that. Right. That, but People that's, try to that's sound the like thing. that now. But yeah, he just record, he naturally like, came He didn't go to a way. studio. You right. Know, he it, just, everything was on that little, little recorder. Tape recorder yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. So, um, so I understand the purpose of it in music because it's it's it is punk rock. It is the biggest form of yeah, punk right, rock. Yeah, right, baby. It just goes back <laughs> oh, to yeah. the whole like black metal stuff too. Like they they did that on purpose to be against everything. You know, they needed it to sound like shit. You know, and he did it. Because that's all he had, um, which is he worked, more punk rock. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and he did it in the garage no or wherever he had. Yeah, wherever he had the his setup at. The means too, he would set up and play. Yeah, yeah. and uh, he made a workout bench out of yeah, <laughs> to yeah, a exactly. recording. Studio. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
But uh, and his brother was upset. My workout. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't like. I got ribs, I, bitch. <laughs> I like that he means so much in the music world. But I really like his drawings, um, especially the drawings he did of like the limbs cut off. Like mm-hmm. that's cool. And I've seen that in stuff. I like. I think even the Locust has like an album cover that has something like that. You know. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Like that kind of that. That's what spoke to me more. And I I think he was just a well rounded artist in general. Like a drawing music and film like he did it all well yeah he knew how to express himself in all those different ways and really again be raw like yes like have a raw like without worrying about what anyone's gonna think or whether it 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 comes off as any way to somebody what what whether someone can fit it into some genre or fit you into something it doesn't matter to him he just made art same thing with you know with crumb that's why i think these are like a pretty good match because i think both of them are first of all punk as fuck you know, again, all you fucking mohawk backpack, <laughs> back patch punk, fucking <laughs> studded belt fuck. Anyway, I love his music. So, I mean, but at the same time, I get why people wouldn't like his music. Right. You know, I, I can understand putting this on, you especially. Ask me? especially you can um, ask me, Nacho, if I like his music. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> I liked it. I liked it. Yeah? No, it was good. It was good. <laughs> I was like, I didn't get a chance to answer this question. No, I mean, um, Well, I was going to segue into you with what I was saying to Diego, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. No, 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 you're good. No, I like I like the whole... I was going to ask you. Lo- lo-fi... I dig this style. Like, it... it I, I could see how, like, a lot of people... Do you like Bright Eyes? I do. It's like kind of like what early... Early... Early, and, early and, and Bright Eyes was I trying to... I think they cover to, he does. He does Devil Town. Yeah, you know, I, I, and I, it's when I first heard his music. For whatever reason, I thought Bright Eyes at first. You know, like it's mm-hmm. something I can mm-hmm. see. Like I, I do listen to like a lot of lo-fi bands, and yeah, dude, it was something I did. I, I guess what surprised me is that I didn't know something like that was out that was you know people were into. I wasn't familiar with Daniel Johnson. Right. You know? So, uh-huh. so to my surprise, I'm like, oh, this is like actually old. Like what, what year did this like was he putting out his music? Oh, no, like putting out his music. Like, 90s, early 80s. 90s. Wait, who? Daniel Johnson. I was eighty three. Oh, that's when he first I was gonna started. Say even earlier, well, that, right? Yeah, it's like around like early eighties because that because that high high you has like eighty three on it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I was gonna say yeah. like oh, it's, shit. it's it's old oh, like man. like around when I was born yeah. like or you know For like sure. when I'm yeah, a kid, yeah. you know like I didn't know music like that existed that far back you know so to, it was to my surprise I'm like oh yeah that was this, you know yeah, that was another thing too like you think of like everything that's going on in the eighties and what kind of music's going on yeah and like Daniel Johnson's just mm-hmm. doing nothing Daniel sounds Johnson, like you know that. like and just like, like Crumb like no one's drawing like Crumb no, like you know no no one's dressing like him that's true I didn't even really think about that whole thing. Because if you don't think of this kind of like lo-fi kind of like music yeah. until maybe later late nineties, yeah, and stuff. Yeah, yeah you don't like way later on, like there was no one yeah. doing that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, it's why, like, it's or nobody like, was. Um, well, it's like you know, like everyone in, was embarrassed to do this. Like in the age. violent films, you know, <laughs> yeah. like their first album came out like early eighties too, and no one was like it didn't they get up, on yeah, later. like till nineties, yeah, late eighties. Yeah, later. it's always surprising me when I would hear them in like 80s mixes i was like the violent femmes are from like they're considered like an 80s band like, yeah like they play them you know with like the cure and stuff like yeah, that exactly. i don't really like i would never think i'm like i thought they were like early 70s or something <laughs> like you know i yeah, when yeah. i first heard them at least but uh yeah you know but daniel johnson um that's crazy yeah that 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 is that makes it even more punk rock yeah yeah dude, like, like he was 80s. doing his shit like no one was doing that yeah like, no one at all like so it was crazy to see you know hear that know when it like what time period it came from and you know just like um you know i guess i well, you know what i wanted to look into is like who covered his music because they, they besides bright eyes besides, this, besides, this year they, uh, this year uh at the end still at, just came out with the whole cover album of at the end of the oh, mo- up, at really? the end of yeah. the movie they have a whole list of people <laughs> did you Did they really uh uh-huh. there's a cd there's a cd too i watched the credits and everything but i don't know how <laughs> no, I they, it, it says like the flaming yeah, lips it says oh, like, yeah, yeah, no it wasn't the whole list but yeah they, 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 they well, said, there is a whole list i didn't know but no no the they, they said list. like the most famous like <laughs> yeah, yeah. bands that you know put out covers yeah yeah i mean yeah, yeah. Those are the bands. They didn't impress me, bro. That's what I'm saying. Oh, okay. I want to see who else who else covered. You need a better list. list. There's like a, Bright Eyes wasn't. Well, I mean, that's what I'm saying. The, there's like that that Daniel Johnson cover album with that Bright Eyes is on that has like a bunch of good yeah. like yeah. bands that are on there. Yeah. Those artists, yeah. Those yeah. Kind of like, yeah. For sure, for sure. I get what you're yeah. saying. But uh, so you saw the so you saw it at the end, man. 
the yeah. list? Yeah. I saw this movie. I watched it. All right. <laughs> just making sure. Because you could be lying. You just said you like the music. I think you're just making that up. <laughs> uh, I don't think he. I don't think Nacho watched this movie. I'm saying that right now, so uh, don't believe his vote. <laughs> I think black metal was influenced by this. I believe that. I believe that. It could be so. I believe that. I think if you listen to anything, I think if you... You know, right now you're listening to to WAP, right? You're listening to uh, <laughs> that's what's hot right now. Yeah, so. you're listening to Cardi B. You're listening to Meg, Meg the Stallion. Mm. It's probably because of Daniel Johnson. <laughs> uh, you're probably listening to them because he started it all. Ask him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I'll tweet at Cardi B. She loves Daniel Johnson. Yeah, and Crumb had does. a comic called WAP too. There you go. <laughs> Facts. Just we. This is just kidding. Oh, no, I thought you were being serious. I was like, damn, that's crazy. I, I, would, facts. I wouldn't be surprised if you did. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Devil of Daniel Johnson. I think this is a great documentary again because it just has that beat by beat what his life was. It doesn't try to give you any. Um, it doesn't try to force you to believe in anything. It doesn't try to give you any kind of. Uh, the director is not uh, trying to make you like him or dislike him. It's just sort of giving you him. It's just sort of showing you. Yeah, it's not is, trying to make you think something like other than. Or just present Jan- Daniel Johnston, you know? It's not making you sway, like, oh, right. do you hate him? Or just, like, right. you know, or yeah. this guy was, like, fucked up or something like that. It's just presenting you, like, the facts and just showing you his whole life and career, pretty much. And and also, too, another thing I liked about this documentary is that every time someone brought up something, every time someone had a story to say, they could back it up with one of his recordings, like, he always had a recording of that situation that they talked about. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Of him talking about it at the time. Either whether it's a little journal he's doing, like, with a tape recorder. Or, you know, whatever. Like, I just... That was, like... Because you're just like, oh, okay. Like, they're not doing reenactments. Like, he's showing you footage of that time. He, yeah. like, recorded his... Like, himself as his mom yelling at himself. Yeah. Like, that's... that's yeah. It's interesting you say that. Like, like for example, when Sonic Youth was after him, right? Or, like, trying to get him home. It was another band, wasn't it? It was called, like, Half Japanese or something? Half no, Japanese. Sonic that's Youth. The one, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah Sonic the one Youth, he but, meets but Half Japanese. Japanese. I'm not familiar. I was going to ask you if you guys were familiar he with that. He hangs band. out with Half Japanese, but that doesn't... They don't... He doesn't take off from them. He no. takes off from Sonic Youth. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Um... Because they're the ones telling the story, kind of. Well, I was wondering, no. like, how is all this recorded, though? It's, uh... Like, is he carrying a recorder on him when this was happening? Because, yeah. yeah, I mean, you hear that audio, you know? He like, always, all like, that. yeah, I guess he always probably recorded himself. Yeah. It seems like it, yeah. yeah. He must have always been carrying, like, a tape recorder <laughs> for some reason, because, Yeah, because I mean, they even show him have, like, a camera really young, like, stuff mm-hmm. when he was, like, yeah. a little... Yeah, Super 8 and, and those yeah. films that he would do. Yeah, yeah I enjoyed that when... I enjoyed those clips, you know, and yeah. just seeing it all grainy and old and just seeing, like, the shit that he was into, like, yeah. playing all these characters, mm-hmm. like, versions of his mom and all that. <laughs> yeah, and, and again, it's, like, one of those things where it's just, like, you know, the, the talent sort of um, overshadowed the mental illness, right? He, you know, people just kind of thought he was weird because he liked playing music and stuff, and it wasn't until it was kind of too late that they had to like realize to get him on medication and do mm-hmm. stuff like that yeah. you know what i mean until he like harmed himself or other people and um yeah I, I think these are like really good documentaries about that they go into that kind of like idea of like depression mental illness where it doesn't try to give you any answers to it it doesn't try to say that it's this or that it's that it just says hey uh people deal with it and they deal with it in their own way sometimes and unfortunately, it, you know, it can get dark, uh, it can get bad, but, you know, I think for the most part, you know, like, uh, I, you know, it's pretty, it's like a happy sad, you know, at the end of this documentary when you see him kind of old, you know, he's like walking with his mom and dad, like yeah. out of church, like all kind of just like, you know, he's like a little kid, you know, he's like an older man, but it's kind of like nice, you know, and just him like, uh, you know, there's like... They're just sitting on the lawn in those chairs, and you're just, like, leaning forward, like, posing for the camera, <laughs> like, looking, like, all serious, you know? And it just looks very, like, innocent. And, like, you know, he just, like, he really does, like, even the mom says, like, oh, I could see it in his eyes all the time that he really does love us, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, and it's just like, yeah, because he's, like, you know, he you hear those recordings, too, where he's like, oh, I want to buy my mom a house, and I'm going to, like, do all this stuff, mm-hmm. you know? Like, like it's just, like, really, like, it, it's one of those things where it's, it's not trying to, like, make it, like, all dark and, like, bad. I think especially with Crumb, too, even though there is some darkness and some badness there, it's kind of showing you that, like, it's just saying that this is what it is. It's just there. Like, there's no... Yeah, it's no, just presenting it to you. Right. It's not trying to make you think one way or the yes, other. Yes, it's not make trying to... Make your own decision on it. Like, yeah. yeah. Or, or, you know, it's... it's 
again too a lot of these things they're like uh you know their their parents are like from this different time so they didn't know how to handle that stuff you know back in certain times they didn't know how to handle mental illness they didn't know how to handle yeah. people acting the way that he was acting they didn't know how to handle daniel crashing the father's plane well okay well that was later though that was that was a lot later that was that's a crazy story explain that's it scary. because you yeah. brought it up you gotta explain it explain it now so he's like pretty he's older by this time yeah it's after like older. his big comeback yeah, yeah he's like he, he comes like, back a long this is after the comeback yeah. actually after it's during yeah. it is the comeback it's, yeah it's yeah. after he plays that big old, that big old concert yeah. yeah is it the one where he starts he starts uh preaching a little bit right Mm-hmm. No, that was like at the record store. Yeah. Right? All right, never mind. You can't explain it because you, okay, so maybe you, your timelines that. are all over the place in these so, documents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, he, yeah. so they bring him back, and, and he's doing like this big old concert down in Austin. He's, he's already he's, like, he's, already, like, he's like, bigger. Yeah. Yeah. He's got white hair. He's like, he's, you know, it's he's like, he meets the uh, the creator of The Simpsons. Yeah, it's like right after that. that was, it was after that that he crashed? It's that concert. He no, gets that him. was later. No, that's not what I'm saying. Oh, that was not that what? far later. The Matt Groening thing Thank was a little you, later. Mondo. But they show the, they show the, the stuff during that, that time, though, yeah, right? Yeah, like, that was... Didn't they show that no, scene around that same time? That with the Simpsons After he way, talks to him, he goes, that's like, yeah, yeah, then they leave. That's that's a different... That's that's later. You're right, you're right, you're right. When you're right, no, no. You're all wrong. You're all right. It is later. No, because you're still you're still wrong. <laughs> yeah. No, no, I mean, Mondo's right. Yeah, Mondo's backing me up. It wasn't that late. <laughs> let, no, I'll but I'm saying, Mondo's but you're saying it. it's a different. You're saying a different. Story. Anyway, so, uh, yeah, okay, so yeah, you're right because the dad says that they skip press, they skip everything, they yeah, just bounce they after he yeah. plays. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Yes. So, then what so they had flown in, and the, but, the but dad, explain. So the dad is the, a pilot. The dad is a pilot, so he has a plane. So he has, a, I'm assuming, a small plane, right? So, yeah, it's like yeah. a like a. It looks like a two man. Right? It's like a one engine yes. plane. Yeah. So there, the show happens. No interviews. They just want. But it's, it's like a big hit. Like yeah. He had, he no, it was a great home. show. They just want to leave. That's, That's it. Wrong, he just wants to get him back home safe. You know, not around all these people, right? So they leave. They fly out. And then at some point, Daniel grabs the keys. Wait, wait, wait. but there's more to that. Mm-hmm. What is he? Why does he do that? Why does it start? He's reading a Casper comic, and the cover of the Casper comic, the Casper's got a parachute on it. Mm-hmm. And so he oh, asks, he his asks dad, his dad if there's parachutes. In he the says, plane. "Let's bail out." Mm-hmm. Let's bail out, and he asks if there's parachutes. Dad says, "Dad says there's no there parachutes." There is none. Yeah. But he proceeds, and he grabs the keys. Turn, like takes him out and throws him out the window. So now the plane is, I'm assuming, off, right? It's just gliding at this point. Mm-hmm. Yes. So now the dad has to somehow land the plane with no, I guess, no power, no, no power. But, no but I mean, down. but and also he's taking Daniel Johnson is taking control. He's fighting of him for the control of the plane. So it's not like so a they're going, they're like so literally. Keep, Going straight they're spinning up. up. That's right. Straight, so they're, they're spinning they're going, all over the place. Exactly. They're spinning up. It's out of control. And then at some point, you know, the dad regains control. And he talks about how he was trained to kind of land. So he kind of like lands into... He's like, yeah, I land in the trees. He said it's so nonchalant. Well, he's there. They're alive, right? But like they show the wreckage and it's kind of scary, you know? Like it's it's like the nose is all the way down. It looks down like between, whoever like, was in that should have died. died. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But he was able to land in and... they're and, both and, fine. But yeah, Daniel fought him for that. Wanted it, <laughs> wanted to leave in parachutes, and yeah. So I mean, just the pictures that they show of him after with his gashes, and yeah. he's just kind of like smiling, kind of just like whatever. You know, the whole family went to go get them, and he's just like whatever. It just shows like a lot of where his mental state was. Too. And it also, I think, shows the love of his parents oh yeah, yeah. Dude, because they didn't, they the didn't fact that they continue to take care of him and not yep you know they obviously committed him at uh, right do they commit him after that or no uh i'm not sure if they do i don't think they did but, th- but that's what i'm saying like they they took care of him they continued they continued to take care of yeah. him until they couldn't or you know until he passed away i imagine i mean i don't know how long his parents were alive for i don't know when they passed away um but yeah so it's just like if your son does something like that, you know, most people are going to take that as very, you know, regardless if they're, you know, they know that they're sick, they're not going to, like, want them around. They're going to assume they're dangerous. You know what I'm saying? So I think that was, like, a good example of, like, his parents. I mean, you know, 
you know, this is some crazy. I mean, there's a lot of crazy family dynamics going on in these documentaries. It's very strange stuff. But the, the another thing that we should mention about this is that no one in his family else seemed to have like any kind of illness, you know, or no, Dan Johnson. That, you know, he was the only one that was kind of like had these problems, you know, like because his parents seem well adjusted, and so do his brother and sister that they show like they seem they fine, seem fine. Yeah. normal no, family like yeah. there's no like it was just him and so it, yeah it is I think that's even tougher like cause cause you do actually have to deal with it like unlike Crumb's parents who were all kind of like nuts a little bit in their own way I'm sorry I'm using that loosely but I mean so they really didn't have to deal with it you know like they just lived in right their slop and kind of like just didn't care kind of and just he was also let like a baby be. though right who? Um, Daniel Johnson. Johnston. Yeah, he was the baby of the family. Baby. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah. So, they, like, you know, so, like, they didn't notice it till later. Like, I mean, they noticed it when he was younger. Like, maybe, like, when he was, like, he started junior high or so. Yeah. Like, he was kind of, like, he wasn't the same person or anything like that. And then, and then until college and then after and then so on, you know. So, like, I, get, I don't think they could really know that he had like these this mental illness or something wrong with him you know and then the drugs didn't make it any better right you know? like yeah. they amplified yeah. it yeah anything. it just kind of made him like that was one of those things that that really got me about these documentaries where i was just like damn like you know you don't have to you don't you don't have to go through some sort of trauma or anything to be talented or to be able to do stuff i don't think you have to i don't think you, you can just kind of you know but it doesn't hurt but it doesn't hurt. <laughs> doesn't hurt. Doesn't hurt to have a screwed up kind of family dynamic. Doesn't hurt to go through some crazy shit. Doesn't hurt to just move around a lot and just yeah. to, you know go through some traumatic stuff. Cause it's like the best. Some of the best. Well, most of the best artists are a lot of the up. best art. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, kids, if you're out there, if you're looking to learn how to play guitar or start drawing, you know, I don't know. If your family's pretty boring, go find a family that's fucked up. Or just find, run away. Find, find a family streets. that's gonna do some dumb shit and yeah, and join just, the circus. Yeah, or, get get or depressed. Or take LSD. Yeah. take LSD. Take LSD. Get depressed. Get sad. Get get in there. Get dirty with it. Just get 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 fucked up because that's the only way you're gonna make good art. Because otherwise you're just gonna make a podcast like this. Because yeah. we're all just pretty balanced people, so <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any art to offer. We just got to talk about documentaries. <laughs> We're talking about other people's art. Exactly. Yes. So get out there, kids. Get, um, you know, get messed up and make some art. Draw, yeah. make some music, and make it raw. Again, punk you rock. fake ass punk rock motherfuckers. Look, I'm talking about like making some real shit. You know, I'm not talking about your, uh, I don't know, your Sex Pistols, Ramones <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> I'm talking about some real punk rock, bro. I'm talking about Robert Crumb. I'm talking about Daniel Johnston. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you're worried about, like, what you what your butt flap is going to say on it. Aww. You know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you're all, you're all worried about what patches you're putting on your fucking jackets when pst, Daniel Johnston can give a fuck. He just wrote some shit. Same thing with Robert Crumb. He just drew some weird asses, some weird <laughs> bodies, some big thighs. Punk. Punk rock. Listen to me. You're all posers. Every single one of you. <laughs> and you know it's true. And I think if you watch these documentaries, you'll even feel even more so like a poser. Yeah. Like you've got, you don't stand for anything. And these people are mentally ill. <laughs> <laughs> and they're more punk than you. Think about that. But that's just my rant for that. But I love both of these documentaries. I love them. I love them. Should we, what, should we start voting? voting yeah, in? I think so. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, Nacho. What do we got? <laughs> what do you think of the plane crash? <laughs> plane what do you, crash what do you got to say? Man. And if you're going to bring up a scene, please explain it. <laughs> I'm going to bring the, the scene where... No, this, this, this documentary was great, and I can see why you picked it to match up with Crumb. Like, besides, you know, being artists, you know, seeing their relationships with their families, like, I don't want to say well, the mental health in both, but I mean... You see that as well, you know. You just see the connections. You don't want to say, but you said it. You know what they go through. Um, no, but and it's there. Yeah, it's there. Again, I was just, I was amazed at this documentary just because it was an artist that I was not familiar with at all. I don't give a shit about Nirvana, but I have seen that image, you know. So 
and I guess Kurt Cobain had made it. I mean, the way the documentary was portraying it, like it seemed like Kurt Cobain kind of put him out. Again, know. another great quote for when when you know <laughs> when, if this were to get a Criterion release. Right there, the the quote. I don't give a shit about Nirvana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. No, no, no but Nirvana's quite horrible. Like, I, I mean, the whole Kurt Cobain. Yeah, yeah, fuck him. You know, but um, no, it's cool. Like, yeah, yeah, fuck him. You know, to know that this music is being hot takes over put out. Like, I, I mean, I, I was a fan of this documentary, the way it was done. You know, seeing like the snapshots, the old pictures, the grainy Super Eight film, all that. You know, relationships with his family his siblings, you know, and just, it's, it's sad, you know, just seeing his story, you know, being this, this kid, this genius, this artist, you know, and to where he got, you know, just the meds, all that, I mean, the, the mental health illness, it's, yeah, yeah, but it was very informative, it was very interesting, I, it was, it was crazy, you know, um, but no, I, I really enjoyed this, and I want to vote that shit in. Cool. Fuck Nirvana. <laughs> Diego um, I really like this documentary uh, I like the other one I like Chrome as well but I really really like this This I watched this before I watched Chrome actually um, and I was uh, taken by the, the level that wasn't the order you are supposed to watch it. I know <laughs> but the level it's set I was like I was like before I watched Chrome which I feel was like the more intense of the two um it set that level high, so I feel like I feel like I watched it right. But uh, um, I really like this, and like You're I said, crazy. Like I said, <laughs> well, there you go, dude. I'm mental, mental illness. You're uh, Charles Crumb. But, <laughs> Your last name is Crumb. But um, but like I said, I, I was a little bit familiar with uh, Daniel Johnston. Um, I had heard some of his stuff. I didn't remember the name, but once I heard um, the the music in the film, I was like, okay, I've heard this stuff. And I've seen some of the, the drawings he did, and I was familiar with his work. Um, but I enjoyed learning more about his story and how he came up. And yeah, you're right. He's more punk rock than a, a lot of bands nowadays that claim to be punk. Um, and going back Close to, your ass, motherfucker. <laughs> going back to what you said before about uh, the other film being some... like. I guess for lack of a better word of using educational because it is a documentary and I feel like documentaries are more educational because they're bringing for sure. forth you know right like for instance like when we talk about movies usually we're putting our own kind of uh, emotion or what our interpretation right. on right where this, this is just it's, there it's yeah, presented it's as is it, yeah. and both films did a good job they didn't sugarcoat anything they didn't sprinkle any sort of extras it was what it was um, so going back to what you said I would take back about suggesting the other film to to people everyone should watch it once at least to get their own perspective on it especially art in general but this this out of both of them i would suggest even more so i feel it's a little bit more watchable um and i would want to own this film although like i said i'm not a huge fan of his music i do respect it i'm not a huge fan i do respect his art and i respect what he was trying to do especially with the whole thing like I mean, I, I really enjoy music. I love music. I feel like it's my first passion with art. Um, and I I see that that was his motivation and his only, like, really, like, um, outlet for yeah, what was going on in, in yeah. his head. Yeah, you know, he did well with art. He did well with film. But music was what he wanted, what he was more, um, kind of like he put all his mu all his emotion and the rawness of, of what came out you know like when he cried at that garage or uh, basement show right like he he cried he cried because he didn't know what else to do and then he went back into the song i think that's an important thing to have in in music in general and and like this person delivering that was perfect it wasn't um like him trying to be something else. Right. Especially with so much like produced music yeah. that you get today that seems very fake. Right, very right, put right, together. right. Yeah, this goes back to that. Like, you know, you don't need that. You just need a tape recorder. And if you really want to do it, you'll do it one way or another. Right. You know, he wasn't trying to do it. He was doing it because it was his outlet. He wasn't trying to be famous. He wasn't trying to do anything. Yeah, he got himself in MTV, but like towards the end of his career, it wasn't something that was like a, a vital thing for him. He was doing it because it's the only thing he really knew how to do. 
Um, he wanted people to enjoy it with him. Like, he just wanted... That right, but it was... Ago. Yeah, it was his his thing, like, his therapy sort of yeah. speak. Yeah, um, he just wanted to go shopping. That was <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and crash once planes. A week, one, yeah, yeah, once a crash week. Plane. No, <laughs> yeah. but I, I, I really enjoyed this film. But he'd ask every day. <laughs> uh, I really enjoyed this film. I, I would want to watch it more so, just so I could pick out stuff I haven't seen. Um, but, yeah, I, I, I voted in as well. Awesome. I was very inter- I was very interested, uh, especially to hear both of your opinions because I I know that you guys weren't like fans of Daniel Johnson's mm-hmm. music. Right. You know what I mean. So that's interesting that you, especially that you say that you like it now, and that you know, sure. and that you know you say that uh, yeah, that He's Nacho likes it. Nacho. Yeah, that Nacho likes it, and that Diego just said that. You know, you're not really into it, but you appreciate it and you understand. Yeah, respect. Yeah, respect, yeah, you that respect level, it. Yeah. And, and you can Be- see him as an artist and where he's coming from. Because, yeah, yeah, there's a lot of documentaries that I've seen about musicians that, you know, I'm not really a fan of the bands that they're in, but I'm just like, oh, damn, I really appreciate that yeah. they're, you know, them as musicians. I appreciate what they've contributed right, to right, right. art in general. Right. Because it was no gimmicks. And the fact, too, like, being a solo artist, like, playing on a stage is already nerve wracking as Especially it is. Especially with, like, you you like he didn't even plug in his acoustic no, guitar. No, it was raw. It was the most raw, really the most punk raw. <laughs> he even mic his guitar. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, no, like people t- kind of like downplay that the fact that even playing on a stage is is already nerve wracking. You know, like uh, uh, at least for the average person, yeah. you know, without putting some sort of facade like painting right. your face or being this you know person right, or without even just like yeah persona yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and stage persona his this songs is the are punk very rock like is fuck episode right yeah this yeah. is the punk as fuck episode yeah and also his songs are just very like you know they're not like him like you know where you it's not like some like you know i, I know this is a really stupid example and but it's not like some like dashboard confessional where he's just right there like you know like yeah like your hand yeah. everywhere right. like you know what i mean like even though i like dashboard confessional right he's a weird singer for the same forever just fact okay go ahead. yeah there you go <laughs> and uh and so like you know but it, it feels just more like um like like kind of like you know if you wandered into an open mic uh-huh. sometime and you just see this guy and you're just hearing him just sing his heart out about these things and he's just playing guitar okay so not it's not terrible right but you get you kind of get the gist of what he's trying yeah, yeah, to do yeah. it's like kind of discovering that and yeah. seems like oh man this is like i don't know i just really like this because it's so raw yeah, yeah, it's just yeah, like yeah. these emotions are real he's using these very kind of simple metaphors he's not trying too hard to like yeah. make anything like there's no rhyming raw, there's no yeah is the there is well, there is some rhyming yeah but it's not like unnecessary but like, it's I feel not like in music dumb. yeah and i feel like in music like there's a <laughs> you you think of a song you're like in the, every end of certain line has to rhyme a certain way or whatever right. he doesn't there's no rules to how he's writing his music and i, yeah, I it's not it's not that nirvana bullshit yeah no, right not true <laughs> no no the best word that you used was raw. It's yeah. literally just raw. Yeah. Like you know, yeah. it's and I know you raw. love raw. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 sorry. Man. <laughs> All right, well, yeah, but yeah. So I mean, yeah, I, I, yeah. That's great to hear that. Um, I'm I'm obviously gonna let it in because I think it needs to be preserved. It's hard to get a hold of uh, in terms of. I don't even think I can get a Blu-ray of it. I was gonna ask that. Like, I have a DVD yeah, of it. They just released well, a few years ago, it's, but okay. it's just like a basic, you know. Like, yeah. yes, I want some supplements on it, this. It's thing. unfortunate yeah, that dude. they couldn't get it going before Dan Johnson passed away because it would have been yeah. great to have been able to get something with him or some. I don't know because they didn't even interview him for the documentary, so maybe they couldn't, you know. Well, I mean, it was just one of those things where they could have got some recent live footage or something that he did yeah, before he passed true. away because he was playing and stuff, you know. Yeah, he's been playing. Yeah, they could have done stuff like that, is what I'm saying. Like yeah, something. Well, if they ever do, it would be it'd be cool if they did that, you know. And I hope they do. Away, I like, think I that like... they will. I think because we're letting it in. I'm letting it in. <laughs> All three of us let it in. Criterion's gonna obviously can I, call. Can us. I ask you guys a question? A random question. If yeah. if they were to make a movie on like Danny Johnson's life. That's as an actor, question. as an actor, who do you? I have an actor in mind who All right. I thought immediately, who? but who? I want to hear it. Who? I don't know if he's a good actor, but no, no, tell me. Who? Like Sarah. Okay, you know, I that that would kind of work as him younger. I, yeah. I him younger, yes, yes, yes. That, because because like I think Michael Sarah would actually like take it seriously. That, you know that, uh, and Michael Sarah actually knows how to play guitar and yeah. sing. Yeah, you know, so I think I think well, that he's would, already next up because he knows how to play guitar. Well. <laughs> You know what I mean, though. I don't even think he knows how to play guitar that good. 
<laughs> so I think he's fine. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I, so I, I, younger, I could see him playing like that, a That's actually like, good. I, I, yeah, I, yeah, I, I never Marcus, thought of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The there was actually awesome. something that was in uh, production for a bit before he passed away where also before Philip Seymour Hoffman passed away where he was going to play him when he was older. That's, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. He was yeah. going to play the older Daniel yeah, Johnson yeah. and I, I can't remember who they were having for the younger one but mm-hmm. Philip Seymour Hoffman was going to play that and that would have been great. That would have been great. Uh, for a young one? Damn, that's a really good question. Um, I was kind of thinking like a sort of like uh, just kind of like a Paul Dano because he kind of has that kind of like goofy kind of like awkwardness, but that's not really a good one. Yeah. It's just kind of what I can think of right now. What about you guys? I, I like the Michael Cera. That makes sense. No, no, no. Pick one yourself. <laughs> Don't <laughs> no, 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 latch on to nobody's I, shit. No, honestly, like I can't like that. After you oh, mentioned yeah, yeah, yeah. that, after you mentioned that, you're incapable that, of it. Do <laughs> it, anybody. Think of somebody. Fucking do it right now. I'm gonna keep saying fucking do it until you fucking do it. <laughs> I don't know, man. I got nobody. I'm sorry. Oh my I god, it's uh, Jesse nobody. Eisenberg. Say yeah. somebody. Dude. <laughs> Jesse Eisenberg. <laughs> <laughs> Mondo, you got anybody? Uh, I don't. All right, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> We're moving on anyway. <laughs> Uh, I'm just kidding. Yeah. You guys, I, you know, but that's a good question. That is a good question because I think that's going to eventually happen. Yeah. That's why I would like you to figure out one now, Diego. God damn it. Because <laughs> people are listening to this. <laughs> the big studios, Criterion, <laughs> sure. they want to know. No, no, it's, I'm just joking. Michael Cera is a good one. Michael yeah, that was that's a good one, one to latch on to. Because he on. looks like him, too. Like, he has, he has, he has, he has right that goofiness. Like, if they straighten has... out his hair, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Well, no, yeah. they don't have to straighten out his hair. Yeah, like, wavy issue, yeah. When he gets older and chubbier, when he's they, in the mental hospital, yeah. they, they can use Jonah Hill. Is he fat right now, or is he skinny? That's a good. That's, Russell, I think well, Russell Crowe's fat right now, so maybe they can use him. <laughs> that's a, that, uh, Jonah Hill being fat or skinny—that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> we're, that's uh, we're recording that after. That's a new damn. That's a good yeah. podcast. Is, yeah. is he fat now, or is he? <laughs> yeah. It's called "Is This the Jonah Hill You're Willing to Die On?" <laughs> Okay, yeah, so it's in, baby. Daniel Johnson. Nice. The Devil and Daniel Johnson is in. We let the devil in. Of course we did, because we're a cult. We love the devil. Oh, yeah. Um, we worship the devil. We worship Daniel Johnson, mm-hmm. at least yeah. I think. Um, it's punk as fuck. Crumb is punk. Devil and, John- devil and Daniel Johnson is punk. Please check out these documentaries. How is Robert Crumb still alive? And that... That is crazy. <laughs> I did not I did not think that he would be. That's pretty wild. It's his sex life that keeps him alive. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. That'd be yeah. Dumb. You got to be a freak. A freak yeah. keep you alive. <laughs> freak will keep living, you alive for a week. He's living in France. <laughs> they got better at... having those French uh, did he piggyback stay over there? rides. He over there? Yeah, yeah, he's, French yeah, feet. He's yeah, yeah, why would he come back? Yeah. I can't imagine he would. Yeah. I'm, I'm just saying. That yeah, uh, Devil and Down Johnson's oh, yeah. in. I'm glad you guys like these documentaries. No, it was, yeah. it was, it was a little bit of different. Com- I, I, I liked it because it was a different conversation. Yeah, yeah you know, because we can't, re- you know, you can't really interpret these movies. You yeah. can't really, it you know, is. you can kind of only really talk about the facts of what the things that are going on mm-hmm. around that time from that thing. But I enjoyed it. I, yeah. I just, I just love. These are both top. Yeah, these are like five. Yeah. Like they're in my top oh, yeah, five favorite sure. documentaries yeah. of all time. Yeah. And sure. if you if you haven't seen them, go watch them. Tell us what you think. And if you have seen them... Unfortunately, they're a little hard to get a hold of. All right. Well, thank you guys for listening. Go buy physical media. Watch Criterion movies. Watch all kinds of different movies. Like, comment, and repost. Yeah, share us. Tell tell your friends about us. Yeah. Or tell us what you think. I mean, do we already say that? No, yeah. At the end of the day, please tell us what you think. Like, if you disagree, you agree with us, we'd love to hear that. Hell yeah. Even if... if, Follow us on Instagram at uh, Criterion Cult Pod. Yeah. And then on Twitter at Criterion Cold Pod as well, and uh, mostly we're really active on Instagram. So on our post, if you can even think of a film that you think should be in the Criterion Collection, throw it on there. Yeah. Please tell yeah. us. Talk to us. We want all we yes. want to do is talk about film. That's what this podcast is about. Thank you for listening. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.